Today, from the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, it's the Houston Oilers versus the Oakland Raiders. Today's game is brought to you by Dodge with the new six-passenger Dodge Aries K and new Ram Tough Dodge pickups and vans. By Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob. Put a little weekend in your week. By United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. And by new gas-saving Crims Oil. Quality in every extra mile. Ask for it. Hello, everybody. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson. And if Charles Dickens was a sports writer, he would say it is the tale of two cities, Houston and Oakland. And for the winner, it will be the best of times. For the loser, the worst of times. As Chris Fire is kicking off for the Raiders. Carl Roaches and Ronnie Coleman are set for the return. Coleman at the goal line. Ronnie's to the 10. 50. 20. And he returns it near the 25-yard line. Let's look at the offense of the Houston Oilers. They, of course, will be led at quarterback by the snake, Ken Stabler. Stabler hitting 64.1% on the year 13 touchdowns but 28 interceptions tim wilson one running back he is there to block for this man number 34 earl campbell about it at the 25 yard line houston has the ball mike renfro will be the wide receiver the goal with two tight ends and earl campbell gets the call and he has a quick four yards it'll be second down and six Mike Renfro, the wide receiver. Now the tight ends, Mike Barber and Dave Castle. On that last play, there was a fumble, Charlie. They stole the ball from Earl Campbell, and Oakland is getting great field position right after the first play of the game. Mike Davis stole the football from Campbell. Davis is number 36. Taking a look at Campbell, 34, going up the middle of that Oakland uh, defensive line. And the ball is snatched right out from under him. Oakland coming up with it. You see in the bottom of the pile right there, 36. Davis coming up with the football, the strong safety. First turnover and the first opportunity for the Oakland Raiders at the Houston 28-yard line. The give is to Kenny King. King formerly with the Houston Oilers. That, he was drafted number three a year ago, but he rushed for only nine yards. Vernon Perry makes the tackle. The quarterback for the Oakland Raiders is Jim Plunkett, hitting 51.6% on the year. And as a starter, they have won nine and lost two. Kenny King, been bothered by an ankle injury. This is the workhorse, Mark Van Egan. Bob Chandler is the wide receiver having his finest year. No gain on the last play. Cliff Branch, you know the speedster. Second down and 10. Inside. To the 25-yard line is Van Egan. He picks up three as Elvin Bethay makes the tackle. So it will be third down and seven. The tight end for the Oakland Raiders is Raymond Chester, and he's an offensive line. And take a look at that offensive line. Number 63, Gene Upshaw, 14-year veteran, has never missed a starting call, either a preseason game, regular season, or postseason game. It's a veteran offensive line for the Oakland Raiders. in the secondary for the Oilers. Arthur Whittington comes in to the offensive set as third down and seven. Check it. That's Ira Matthews. That's it. Flags go down. We had action before the football was snapped. Right away, this ball game is jumping off and get a, a turn of events. Ball start. Offense number 65. Well, the call is on Mickey Marvin, the right guard of the Oakland Raiders. And that's not good for Oakland because they were in position to kick a field goal, taking it back now for uh, Chris Barr. It's making it a little longer if they don't pick up some yardage here. They're in a situation right here, Charlie. They're going to have to throw the football. Third down and 12. Let's look at the defense of the Oilers. They'll go with a front three, basically, although we'll see some changes. And that is Andy Doris, Ken Kennard, and Elvin Bethard. The linebackers, and they are excellent. And the secondary with 
Tatum drawing the starting assignment over Perry, but Perry's going to be in and out of the ballgame. He's bothered by an injury. Third down 12. Bucket has time. Frank, he got in. Knocked to almost intercepted. Number 27, Greg Zimmer. Picking up Cliff Bratch. We'll take another look. It'll be fourth and 12. The ball was thrown too late and not far enough, Charlie, because Cliff Branch, the speedster, was cutting from the right side of your screen all the way back to the left, and he did have a step had the ball been there, but Plunkett got nailed just as he threw it. You can see right there that Stemrick made an excellent play, and Branch made an excellent play of stripping that ball out of his arms. He grabbed his arm, made sure he didn't come up with an interception, giving at least Oakland an opportunity to come up with three points for the field goal. And it was Andy Doors that was putting the pressure on the passer. 37-yard line, an attempt of 47 yards by Chris Bob. He's got it 47 yards away. And the Oakland Raiders open the score, capitalizing on the turnover and the fumble recovery by Mike Davis. So it is Oakland 3, and Houston nothing will be back with a kick. There he is, Davis, the strong safety, Mike Davis. He's the man that stripped the ball and picked it up from uh, Earl Campbell, the first play of the game for the Houston Oilers. Bob Nelson was also involved in that play. Now Barr kicks off for the second time in the ballgame. It is high and way short towards the sideline. It goes out of bounds, an automatic five yards will bring it back, and this time kick from the 30-yard line. And also, it's going to be a good field position probably for Houston when they receive this kickoff. So as we come back, let's look at the offensive line of the Houston Oilers. And look at number 77, Angelo Fields. He's taking the place of Leon Gray, who's out for the year because he tore an Achilles uh, tendon in his leg. He's a little fella somewhere in the area. I say area of 340 to 60 pounds because they don't have a scale big enough to weigh him at their training site. He stands 6'6", <laughs> and defensive linemen say it's a cab ride just <laughs> to get around it. Ron Phillips, the head coach of the Houston Oilers. And there he is, Angelo he is. Field. He's a rookie. This is only his third start. He's taken in the second round of the draft. Played his collegiate ball at Michigan State. He was a defensive player until his senior year. So this is really only the second year that he has been on offense. You can take a look. He's standing. He took up the whole picture. There's Tom Flores, the, the head coach of the Oakland Raiders. There it is. Oh, oh. Does it make a difference? Is he a large person? I'd say he is. Number 81 is uh, wide receiver Jeff Croft. Scooped up at the 12-yard line on the return by Kyle Roaches. Roaches takes it to the outside. And you're right, the Oilers will have good field position. Chris Barr, the man who kicked off, made the tackle after a 26-yard return. So Houston will move on offense for the second time, and here's the defense. Number 72, John Matuzak, is really having an outstanding year for, for the Oakland Raiders and providing a lot of great leadership. Number 83, the historic Ted Hendricks, having, I think, the best year of his career. The man who leads to everybody in interceptions, number 37, Lester Hayes at the cornerback position. And don't forget number 36, Mike Davis, who stripped the ball from Earl Campbell, came up with a fumble, the turnover, that led to the field goal. Pass is complete, first down, going to Dave Castro. Covering 13 yards and the first down, Bob Nelson, the linebacker, stops him. It is at the Oakland 49-yard line. Charlie, you said you're going to dance with uh, the one that brought you, and we you mentioned bet. about this combination. Look at Staber. He's looking for number 87, and that is Dave Casper, the stork. Hit Staber after he released the football, but 87, Casper was just looking for that open area between the linebackers. He found the open area. Staber found him. Saber and Casper played together for six years with the Oakland Raiders. Here's Earl Campbell. Flips as he makes his turn. He may get a yard, but that will be it as Bob Nelson was there to cut him down, the linebacker number 51. Bob Nelson got penetration and got an arm on his legs. And what you're going to have to do against the Houston Oilers and Earl Campbell, you must get penetration at that line of scrimmage and get back in that secondary or in the backfield and disrupt things. Otherwise, if he gets to the line of scrimmage and through it, you're in a whole lot of trouble defensively because he's going to pick up a lot of yards. Second down and 10. Oakland out in front by a score of three to nothing. Campbell on the draw. Campbell has two yards, and that is it. It will be third down and eight. Again, it is Bob Nelson. He joins Reggie Kenlaw, the middle guard. Kenlaw played his 
collegiate ball at Oklahoma and has gone against Earl Campbell on the collegiate field, but first time that they have met since they've been in the pro. Take a look at Stenzeru, the defensive lineman for uh, Houston getting a little work done on the sideline. Five men in the secondary. Billy White Shoes Johnson is in as a receiver. They give instead on the draw up the middle to Rob Carpenter. And Carpenter is upended after a yard. So it'll be fourth down and seven. And the Raider defense is the story of the ball game right now. This time it was John Matuzak. The snake was trying to spread that defense out and hope they get a draw play that worked going up the middle and break it for a big game. But it was not to, to be because Oakland played it very, very well. Fourth down, so Cliff Parsley will be kicking. Ira Matthews is set for the return. And the center wants a change of football for the Houston Oilers. It could be there's a lot of the stick em on that football, and he wasn't able to get a good grip on it to get a good snap. Don't want to make a mistake down here. That's David Carter. Offensive center on the snaps for the Oilers. Carl Mock is the center when they're running from or passing from scrimmage. Matthews feels it, bobbles it, drops it. He is hit. It is recovered by the Oakland Raiders inside the five-yard line. Corker was there. The punt covered 38 yards. Otis McKinney recovered the fumble. So we have had a strange opening to this wild card game. The Raiders have the ball when we come back at their own five. Main man for the Houston Oilers, and so far, Oakland has closed the door on it. Well, Oakland has done a good job so far in this ball game of stopping the running attack of Houston. That's what they have to do. They've got to stop Earl Campbell. They've got to force the snake to go back and throw because you know so far this year when the snake has had to really throw the football, they've had a lot of trouble uh, winning the game. Oakland now from their own five-yard line, first down. Just under ten and a half minutes left to go. We're in the first quarter. Mark Van Egan gets the call. And he picks up three yards to the eighth. It will be second down and seven. Mike Reinfeld makes the tackle, and now let's watch from behind at ground level. And we mentioned about Oakland. They need to get their ground game going, good too, so that Earl Campbell is on the sidelines. But you see a little slippage down there. That wouldn't happen, I don't believe, in the Astrodome because it has synthetic turf. But here we're down here below sea level, and the field down there gets a little slippery at times. And there is Mark Van Egan. We mentioned the fact that he is the workhorse of the offense for the Oakland Raiders. Mike Reinfeld shaken up on the play. Reinfeldt was originally with the Oakland Raiders, as uh, Dave Resnick pointed out this morning, the San Francisco Examiner. He unfortunately did not play a game with them in regular season. He played in 1976, two games in preseason, was then put on waivers, and was then picked up late in the season by the Houston Oilers. So his career in reality has been with Houston and not with the Oakland Raiders, although he did pass through. The they did, they can't again. afford to lose him That's because right. Vernon Perry is hurt. Tatum started at the strong safety position. They don't have that many uh, players on the roster in the secondary for the Houston Oilers. And so it is Wilson, Perry, Tatum, and Stimmick now in the secondary. And it is second down, Shep. Bucket dumps it off right side. Lots of room to tight in Chester. Raymond Chester. J.C. Wilson moves up to make the tackle. First down. Wait a minute. Ten. Both teams are going to go to their tight end in situation. This is a zone defense by the uh, Houston Oilers, but plenty of time for Plunkett to look downfield. The offensive line with Gene Upshaw and Shell in there did an excellent job of protecting the quarterback. And Chester was wide open, coming up with a big first down for the Oakland Raiders. First down, Oakland at their own 18-yard line. They lead 3-0 in the ball game. Kenny King getting the call, number 33. An ankle injury of the last couple of weeks seems to be all right as Tatum and Bingham make the time. Now taking a look at Kenny King to see how he moves early in this game to see if he is hampered because of the ankle injury, but that time he looked as quick as ever. He has a, he has a dimension to Oakland that they really haven't had that much, and that is a great outside speed. They've always had that fullback that could bang away, bang away inside. They haven't always had the man that could get outside and break it for a long game. Reinfeld is back in the secondary for you. King a 
again gets the call. Mark at the 24-yard line, so it'll be third down and four after he has one, and Robert Brazil. The outside linebacker is the man who stopped the yard third and three. And right now, coming up for a situation for Oakland, they're in a passing situation. Third down and four. The key receiver has been Raymond Chester, the tight end, number 88. Chandler splits away. Branch is in the slot. Chester's on the right side. Looks to Chester. Looks to Chester. Coming back over the middle, and he overthrows it. He intentionally overthrew, though, because there was excellent coverage on Chester. As Wilson and Ryan both picked him up. Actually, good blocking by the line, because Punky was in a position. He, you know how long you're back there as a quarterback. Taking a look at number 88, that's Raymond Chester getting a workout over there by Washington, and he's being picked up. Everybody knows that, or Houston knows that they like to go to Chester, so he gets the attention of those secondary people. But Plunkett was back there long enough that he knew that if he waited any longer, he was going to get nailed, so he got rid of the football. Kyle Roach is the free agent rookie from Texas A&M. is set to return the punt of Ray Guy, who had a 43.6-yard average during the regular season third in the NFL. Eight yard line to the 45. Roaches goes out of bounds around the 47 yard line. He'll get nine yards on the return. The kick covered 37 yards. Oakland leading Houston 3 0 on Chris Fire's 47 yard field goal. It was set up by Mike Davis recovering the ball. A fumble from Earl Campbell. In reality, he simply stood there. Play action. And he is sacked. Lester Hayes got him. The left cornerback was coming. The Raiders had 54 sacks during the regular season third in the NFL. You don't expect a cornerback to be coming after you very often in the National Football League but because it's double tight end situation. It was the fact that faking that ball, it was a play action pass. He was looking to go to his left, but you're going to see 37 Lester Hayes come into the picture. No one came in his direction, and his responsibility was out in the flat. Since no one came, he went after Stabler, made a big sack of nine on the play. Billy Johnson is in. Saber to throw. As protection fires, it's incomplete 50-yard line. He was going to Mike Barber, the other tight end, and Mike Davis, a strong safety, had the coverage. Offensive line has got to do a job of protecting Kenny Stabler because it takes time for that pattern to develop. We're talking about fields. Number 77. Now, can you imagine what Dave Browning is feeling like? He's giving away at least 100 pounds to that man. And there's no way he's going to grab him and turn him. The only thing that he can do is try to beat him on quickness. Third down, 19. Stabler has completed one of two. Open now with five in the secondary. They'll come with a four-man rush. This one is dropped off to Rob Carpenter. Slips the tackle to 40, 45, and then out of bounds. He goes out at the 48-yard line. That's where they started. So it'll be fourth down and 10. Ted Hendricks got it. So far, Oakland's defensive unit really is doing a good job against Houston. They have not permitted Houston to get into the type of game that they like to play offensively, and that is giving the ball to number 34, Earl Campbell. Completely disrupts Houston's game if you can't get the ball to Campbell and have him pick up three and four and five yards of crack. Cliff Parsley to kick. Ira Matthews is set for the return. The last two times, too, Houston had excellent field position. In the way of nothing. Good kick. Matthews takes it seven yard line. Has a block. 15. Flag is down, and Matthews goes down as he is hit by John Corker, number 57, the rookie from Oklahoma State. 45 yards of the kick, an eight-yard return. Tim Smith was also there on the coverage. They're going to go back, Charlie. That was a John Corker is off the on open. Back. They're going to have terrible field position. And three and running back about six yards. Chuck Heberling is the referee. The other officials: Gordon Wells, McCory Haggerty, Bob Beeks, Bill Swanson, Gil Mace, Rich Graff. The alternate is Richard Ferguson. Foul. Clipping on the run back. Number 57. First down. 
Randy McClanahan. You talk about experience. Well, today's officials have a total of 191 years of experience at high school, college, and in the National Football League. Officially the ball on the five-yard line. Mike Stintzerud replacing Andy Doris in the defensive line for Houston. Jim Plunkett, the quarterback. Double tight. Van Egan. Van Egan coming to the 10-yard line, so he picks up five. It'll be second and five. Ted Washington makes the tackle along with Greg Bingham. Bob Truppy, who is here covering the game in the pre in the pregame show a report on Dan Pastorini because a lot of rumors had been floating around here was in an automobile accident last night talked to him Bob just told us facial lacerations he said there was a possibility of a, a broken ankle or broken leg that did not happen facial lacerations Pastorini and he is all right Van Egan again 13 yard line so it'll be third down and still a couple to go as Vernon Perry, the strong safety, makes the tackle. Now Oakland is employing that double tight end situation because now they, they, like Houston, when they run the double tight, can run either to the right or to the left. You know, you cannot run an off tackle play unless you have a tight end in the ball game because somebody has to block down on the defensive end. Somebody has to kick out on the linebacker. And Oakland right now is just hoping to pick up a first down to get out of this hole down there. Raymond Chester and Derek Ramsey are the two tight ends. They do not pick up the first down. Van Egan gets the call. Daryl Hunt and Vernon Perry. Perry, number 32, is very pleased with the defensive effort of the Oilers. Well, he was hurting, but he was strong enough to make that hit on the line of scrimmage and push the running back back. This is a big play for both ball clubs, particularly for Houston. Stopping Oakland right now. Here you take a look at the ground level. Number 32, Vernon Perry, making the hit on Van Egan, stopping the first down. Going to force Oakland to punt right now. And once again, I think for the third time in a row, unless there's a penalty, Houston should get excellent pitch uh, field position. Ray Guy will be kicking to Kyle Roaches, as you can see, at the Houston 44-yard line. Take a look at Ray, Ray Guy from behind. He is the type of kicker, though, that can get you out of a jam like this. And he has failed it. Take it back at the 33-yard line to the 40. To the 45. A punt covering 54 yards. Salado makes the tackle. And Houston has field position, but not near as good as we thought that they might have. Earl Campbell. Biggest gain that Campbell has had in the ball game, and it's six yards. And they're going straight ahead because it's straight ahead blocking by that, that Houston offensive line. If you get any type of seam at all for that man. Now here taking Carl Mock he is going on uh, Reggie Kinlaw right over the, the center. And it's a standoff. When you get a standoff by the center on that nose guard, there's going to be a natural hole there for the running back. And there was. And Campbell picked up five. Bob Nelson inside linebacker leads the tackle. Going deep. Almost intercepted. Burgess Owens almost picked it up. Guess who he was looking for? The man that you've been talking about. <laughs> yes, sir. Number 87, Dave Casper, trying to make it. And Casper almost came up with a great catch. The ball was thrown behind him. And you look at Burgess Owens there. He had an opportunity to come up with it also. But there were defensive men back there. The ball was up in the air. It was up for grass for anybody. Taking a look right now, the snake, Kenny Staber going back to throw. Good protection, gets the ball up in the air, as you can see. It's anybody's ball down there. Owens almost coming up with the interception. Staber has completed two of four for 21 yards. Quick out, far side to Ronnie Coleman. Coleman streaking down the sideline with the first down and out of bounds at the 27-yard line. 22 yards on the play. Mike Davis finally caught him. Houston converting on a third and four. That time he was out there by himself. Either a linebacker was unable to get out there or the linebacker was picked because he got rid of the ball in a hurry. As you see there isn't anybody out there, a linebacker or a defensive back, to make the play when he makes the catch. An easy first down, and once again, excellent field position for Houston. And Coleman had only 16 receptions during the regular season. First down at the Oakland 27-yard line. Earl Campbell, great shot, 12-yard line. A 
quick 15 and a first down. Mike Davis with the tackle. You may stop this man one play, two plays, but eventually, if there's any steam at all, he's going through straight ahead blocking as you're taking a look at the offensive line. Bob Young, the veteran at offensive left guard, provides a hole for him, and that's all that's necessary for this man picking up another big first down for Houston. 1,934 yards. This is their game. This is what Houston wants to do. Get that ball to Earl Campbell. Two play passes by Staple. Campbell has 26 yards. He'll add a couple more to that total as he goes to the 10. Matuzak makes the tackle. It'll be second down and eight. Big John Matuzak made the hit on him, but Earl still picked up three yards and he was hit near the line of scrimmage, showing you the strength of Campbell because you're taking a look at Big John Matuzak. He's weighing in about 280 pounds. 6'8". In shape. Yes. 10-yard line, second down. John Matuzak really having an outstanding year. Campbell, slipping two tackles, hiding his way to the six-yard line. And he got the four yards on his own, taking Raider players with him. Mike Davis finally hauled him down. Earl Campbell was nailed at the line of scrimmage once again by Matuzak. He hit him at the line of scrimmage, just showing the great strength and the agility of Earl Campbell. Most backs would have been down right there. But it was and I think to Bob it. Nelson right, right there, Nelson right bounces there. off of it. He didn't wrap his arms around him, but how are you going to wrap your arms around that man? Take a look at the thigh, his leg. It'll be third down and three. Campbell. Short of the first down. It'll be fourth down as Matt Millen, the rookie from Penn State. And Bob Phillips is taking a look. He wants to know how far it is for the first down. But one thing is, you've got to get some points when you're down there. you got an Earl Campbell that you only need a uh, half a foot to go with it. But here he is. Watch the leg drive of Earl Campbell. He's hit right there. His legs continue to churn, although that there's three and four of the Oakland Raider defensive players there. Change brought out to show the exact distance. You got, uh, oh, you got a yard. Mitch Caster coming into the ball game. That's three tough feet to go. Three tight ends in the ball game. Long and early going for it. Sustaining a field goal attempt in the tie right now with 146 left to go first quarter. So put that in your memory book. And I think that the ball undoubtedly will go to a man that carries the number 34. That's who I give it to. Raiders have four down linemen now. Matuzak, Kinlock, Joe Campbell, Dave Browning as Nelson the linebacker comes out. You're going to see a massive humanity down there because Oakland is digging in. So is Houston. Campbell, he's got it. The Campbell pays off. He goes to the one-yard line. Lester Hayes stopped him. Well, I guess, you know, when you have an Earl Campbell, maybe it really isn't that much of a gamble, Charlie, because he is so strong, so powerful. He's built low to the ground. You're going to take a look at number 34. Wilson going in first to try to provide a hole for him, but he just bowls his way forward. Virtually, there's no way to stop him unless you hit him in the backfield. you got to get him before he gets to the line of scrimmage. And this is the ninth play of the drive. Pull out backfield. Carpenter in motion. Campbell. He cuts down. Houston has the lead. 55 yards on the drive. Nine plays. And it's Houston's type of offense. Get that ball to Earl Campbell. Run him straight ahead. Let him find his own hole. The gap in there. He did it that time. The tough yardage situation. Tom Flores knew who was going to get the ball. We all know who was going to get the football. That's one thing. But how do you stop Earl Campbell? The only way you can stop, as I said, you must get penetration by that defensive line to get him in the backfield. Here it is. 45, Wilson is his blocking mate. He provides a hit there. Casper, 87, is fighting and scratching to help him get into the end zone. So is Rob Carpenter with a good block. Said there'd be a massive humanity down there. There was, but emerging from it all, number 34, Earl Campbell. The drive covered in time, three minutes and 55 seconds. And we have 45 seconds left to go. 
Injured player with a timeout on the field. And there is Earl Campbell. 13 touchdowns all rushing during the regular season. I can't see the number, Charlie. I, don't know I can't either. Earl Campbell dishes out a lot of punishment, but you have to know, even though he is strong, he absorbs a lot of punishment. And the big question is, how long can he continue to do it? Angelo Fields, the man that we have been talking about, the starting offensive left tackle replacing Leon Gray is the injured player. Today's telecast presented by authorities of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience, and he rebroadcast for the use of this telecast about the express written consent of the Oakland Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. If they have to carry him off the field, Charlie, how are they going to do it? <laughs> that would be tough. 300 and ball games had a slip disc, had a back problem. Tony Fritz to attempt the point after Gifford Nielsen to hold. 45 seconds left to go first quarter. Oilers leading for the first time. Flag is down. Oakland is offside. The extra point attempt was wide. I believe it was Oakland, though. It looked like the man rushing from the left. Dwayne Osteen, I believe. Left yes, side was uh, Oakland. Jumped the gun. Costly penalty. What is he? I hope that Tony's not checking the wind, not from that angle. Defense, defense of the left hand. That was the rush man. That was the man who was going to rush and try to block the kick. You don't send both of them. You, you can see right there, he is offside. Number 35, Dwayne Osteen. It is collegiate ball not far from here at San Jose State. What you try to do at that position, you try to time it. Because in order to block it, the kick is going to be off in about 1.3 or 1.4 seconds. So that means it doesn't have a great deal of time to get back there and block it. So if you, you have to have it exactly right to go around to the outside. He was just trying to get the jump. This one is good. So the score, the Houston Oilers 7 and the Oakland Raiders 3. Now with 45 seconds left to go, we're in the first quarter of the wild card game. And earlier today, Dallas defeated Los Angeles in the NFC wild card 34 to 13. So Dallas will be playing at Atlanta. Minnesota will be at Philadelphia in the NFC next weekend. Now these two, these two teams. If the Oakland wins, they will not play San Diego. That's right. Unless it's the championship game. Oh, well, they would be in a championship game, yes. But you can't play uh, next week in the semifinals anyone in your same division. And the two wild card teams from the West, Oakland, San Diego won that division. From the Central, Cleveland Browns won that division. And Houston is here as the wild card team. They are checking the right knee of Angelo Fields. They do not know yet whether or not he can return. Ira Matthews and Keith Moody are set for the kickoff return of Tony Fred. Receivers for the NFL Raiders, 80 at halftime will Keith have an update Moody. on Dan Pastorini, who was in an automobile accident last night, and from the information we received, had some facial injuries. But nothing too serious. That is the word that we have now. Brian Gumbel will be updating all of that. Matthews, five-yard line. Ira to the 15. And he is upended around the 18 or 19 yard line. They'll mark it the 18 yard line. And Daryl Hunt was the man who hit him for the Houston Oilers. And he is getting up very, very slowly, Charlie. Looked like it, uh, it could be a leg problem. With Matthews coming off, you can see right there. It could be an ankle also. But he was really turned head over heel. Take a look at what happens with return men. Sometimes you get uh, some great gains, and sometimes oh. you really get nailed. Look at that. And it was number 50, Daryl Hunt. The man who tripped him up. 18-yard line, Oakland in their own territory. Oilers lead at 7-3. 37 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Pluckett to throw. Pluckett is wrapped up. First sack for the Houston Oilers is Kent Kennard and Alvin Bethea were there. Oilers did not have that many sacks, only 34 on the year, comparing to the Raiders, 54. That time, the secondary of Houston did an excellent job. Oakland set out just three receivers. Actually, time-wise, 
ordinarily you get the ball off at least 3.5 seconds Plunkett had plenty of time he was looking couldn't find anybody open what he should have done was just unloaded that football and get rid of it and not take that long particularly down there as close as they are to their own goal line it'll be second down and 21 King gets a call and he may get a yard and that'll be about it as Ken Kennard is there to grab him and time runs out on the first quarter and after one is complete it is Houston seven and Oakland three will be back three Oakland California and Charlie Jones Lynn Dawson and love you blue is here in Oakland oh yes Houston the fans love them and look at that for the Raiders zero passing yardage in the first quarter and it is third down and 20. Bucket going deep. Cliff Branch can't get to it. He overthrows him by three full steps. Reinfeld had the cover. He did not want to underthrow him because Reinfeld was playing center field for Houston. He was back there. And you've got Cliff Branch, who is a class sprinter. He was at least a couple of years ago. It's been, he's been, you know, he's been in pro ball nine years now. 32 years of age. You got to slow up sometimes. But I was talking to the coaches of Oakland before the ball game in the locker room, and I asked about Cliff Branch. I said, "What kind of speed does he have?" And Chet Franklin, uh, who coached him in Colorado, said he is the same today that he was when he was in Colorado. Oh boy! Great guy to kick. Kyle Roach is going to give again give the Houston Oilers field position low snap got a hold of that Roaches takes it back at the 42 he's to the 45 he's to the 50 the 45 37 yard line Todd Christensen who snaps for the Oakland Raiders in a punting situation is a man who made the tackle back once again Houston has been enjoying great field position except for the first time they had the ball when they gave it up to the 30-yard line. He'll pick up seven on the play. It'll be second and three as Ted Hendricks makes the tackle. Here's what it looks like to the kicker when that ball is coming back. And Guy is an excellent athlete. This is a slow, low snap. But he, he gathers that ball in very nicely and booms it. But unfortunately for Oakland, fortunately for Houston, Oakland has made a great return. They're on the 30-yard line now. When Houston wins, Earl Campbell usually carries the ball about 25 times. He gains about 155 yards. Well, this is his 12th carry. And he now has 49 yards rushing in the game as he goes to the 26. Rod Martin with the tackle along with Burgess Owens. Right at the first down marker. Double tight for Houston. The reason they do that, as we said before, we got two great blocking tight ends. Number 87, Dave Casper is one of them. And he is blocking on a man that's a lot smaller than number 53, Rod Martin. And when he gives away about 30 pounds, you think it's a mismatch that your tight end has the advantage on straight ahead blocking. You also notice there, Earl Campbell slipped a little bit. I think if he hadn't slipped, they wouldn't be bringing out this change. He was getting ready to plant that foot and bowl his way forward. First down anyway. Be sure to stay with us at halftime. Brian Gumbel hosting NFL 80. He will have a live phone hookup with Dan Pastorini, and they'll be updating that story. Dan, Dan's getting, getting a lot of publicity. A lot of publicity, and he wasn't even activated, which he was a little upset about that, and I'm sure that uh, Brian will be asking that question also. 26-yard line, and a first down. 7-3, Houston lead. Campbell right side, give him two. So it'll be second down and eight. Just under 13 and a half minutes left to go in the first half as Matt Millen and Richie Kinlaw make the tackle. You could see on first down they were anticipating the run because that's what Houston has been doing and they had the linebackers. They were in a two-point stance but they were up on that line of scrimmage looking for and anticipating the run. And they stopped at that time. What they've got to do, simple, you know, don't give Houston four yards on first down. Four more yards on first down. They didn't let time in his second and eight. So let's see if Stabler throws it. We'll back to Campbell. He stays with Campbell. Campbell diving to the 19-yard line. He has five. It'll be third down and three. Reggie Kinlaw, the middle guard, makes the tackle. They're doing some blocking up front. That, that offensive line, they know what they've got to do. Here you see Big John Matuzak having a good year. 
see the strength of Big John on that. He didn't make the tackle, but he occupied two of the uh, Houston offensive linemen. Ronnie Coleman comes in, and he is in as a receiver. This is a passing formation. Coleman in motion. A little play action didn't do anybody. And <laughs> it away. When the snake throws it away, he throws it away. You like that. There was a couple of flags dropped. But boy, this is something you've always advocated. Put it up in the stand. Don't take a chance yet because, you know, first of all, the snake has never been known as a scrambling type quarterback. But he's always been known as an intelligent quarterback. That was an intelligent move. They had the blitz on, but just got rid of the ball. And unfortunately, they also had a penalty. It will be marked off against the Houston Oilers. Earl Campbell so far 14 carries 56 yards rushing. Here's the call. Holding offense number 70. Third down. The holding on the left tackle Conway Heyman who has replaced Angelo Fields who's out with a sprained knee. And for Heyman he really is not 100%. He's better than he was a week ago but he isn't at 100% right now. It could be a problem for Houston. Third down, 13. Carson. He'll get two yards. Rod Martin with the tackle. He'll get fresh in the ball game now. And the snake was hoping to break one, but he was also looking at putting that ball in good position. So Frisch has got a straight ahead shot to kick the field goal. Frisch has hit his last four straight. 19 of 24 during the regular season his range but he has been bothered by a back problem and a leg problem the last couple of weeks in fact the Oilers are also carrying Chester Marco as a field goal kicker 45 yard attempt does not make it from 45 yards away look at Tony he thought he had it made but it did not go far enough. He punched that ball. It would have been if he got enough distance on it because it was right in the middle of the goalpost. From 45 yards out, he comes up, what, maybe a foot? Two That's feet short. That's about it. You take a look at the kick there. Not much of a follow through by first, but he says it's good. He, he thinks, thinks he has. Yes. Wait a minute. team for many years at Wimbledon passing away recently and we're all going to miss it. Charlie you mentioned field position. You're absolutely right. Hopkins had terrible. They had the ball on uh, Houston's 28 yard line when they recovered the fumble. Other than that they were on their own five, their own five and their own 18 yard line. At least this one they started out on the 28. Now second down and eight. Ten minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the first half. Key. 34 yard line, maybe the 35. It'll be third down in around three as Bingham makes the tackle. This is a the ball game is a strange feel to it. There's no, there's not a, a dominating factor has not appeared as of this moment. Only on just one occasion. That's when uh, Houston scored and they got the ball to Earl Campbell. They had good field position when they got the football and he had a couple of good runs and they took it in, stuffed it right down Oakland's throat and got in to score. Other than that, nothing really. Receivers are in. Morris Bradshaw comes wide to the near side. The owners are five in the secondary. Bucket is pressure. He throws deep. Brad goes up. It is tipped. It is incomplete. We got rid of the football that time. Uh, Cliff Branch did not time that very well. He jumped too soon. And really didn't have a shot of coming up with the ball. But there were two defensive men back there. And Cliff Branch along with him. Here you take a look at number 21, Cliff Branch. Outstanding receiver, and he is a long ball threat. You can see the, the quickness and the swiftness of Branch. Now, he's open, but the ball is underthrown. Now, he's there, and he's going to jump. He jumps too soon right there. He's up. The ball hadn't got there yet. And you got two defensive men back there. you got Vernon Curry and Mike Reinfeld. Underthrown, you're right, but it was still 70 yards in the air. Ray Guy to kick. Kyle Roach is set for the return. the 
punt from the line of scrimmage. A flag is down. Ray Guy putting on an exhibition, the flag drop on the far side. You know, last, last week uh, we were in New York uh, broadcasting the Giants Oakland game. Two punters, Jennings and Ray Guy. Neither one of them really had a very good day for, for them. But Guy is the type of punter that can really get you out of a jam. He can get a shot like that when you need it. He can pop that ball 60, 70 yards. When he gets it all, as they say, he can put it away. And he got it that time. Great follow through. See the follow through? The young people who have aspirations of being kickers should watch this man. Number 28 on the receiving team. Holding Carl on Jack Tatum. So the ball goes back to the 10-yard line where Houston has possession. If Oakland win, then next weekend Oakland will be at Cleveland, Buffalo at San Diego. Houston is the lead, 7-3. to three. Saber has completed 3-5 of five for 44 yards. And Earl Campbell slips as he makes his cut. He will lose a yard. It will be 2nd and 11. Hendricks was there to cover him as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KCRA TV, Channel 3, Sacramento. Five seconds left to go in the first half. Houston leading Oakland 7 to 3 in the wild card game. Earl Campbell now has gained 55 yards. Billy Johnson is in as a wide receiver. Campbell goes to the 15 yard line. So he adds six more to his total. And it'll be third down and five as Reggie Kinlaw makes the tackle. Bob Nelson was also there. You know, Kenny Stabler should have an advantage playing here. certain parts of that field that are wet. In the case, the first down play that you saw where Campbell slipped, he was going to his right and he had to cut by planting his right foot. The second time down that area, he ran it just straight ahead. That's what you have to do. If it's slippery down there, just go straight ahead. Campbell, the remaining back, is stopped. It'll be fourth down. And now the Oakland Raiders can come up with excellent field position. Ted Hendricks makes the tackle. Parsley will be kicking. Keith Moody is set for the return. He had a report on Ira Matthews. Yeah, his knee is a problem. They don't know whether he'll be able to return in this ball game or not. But he did have some problems with the knee when he went head over heels on that last return. Now, there are two knee problems, one for each side. Um, Angelo Fields, number 77, the offensive tackle for Houston. He has knee problem also. Win, not a factor here. A flag is down. Moody takes it on the run at the 50. He is to the close to the 40-yard line. The mark is the 41, but don't forget a flag was dropped. Darrell Hunt was there for the Oilers. A 34-yard kick and a 10-yard return. Illegal motion. It will be against the Oilers. They'll refuse it. So the Raiders will have excellent field position with 7.44 left to go. We're in the second quarter. Illegal motion, offense, number 51, refuse, first down. Ted Thompson. Ted Thompson, he is in there as a blocker on a punting team. We've got a timeout, and Houston has the lead, but Oakland has great field position. across the 40. Just give him a yard on the play. It'll be second down and nine. Ted Washington was there. Ted Washington does an outstanding job against the running game. A lot of times they get him out in passing situations. But they're stringing this play out. Number 32, Vernon Perry, the strong safety. Got good penetration, so he looks like he's healthy, Charlie. He's playing very well. You know, looking at the situation here for Oakland, they've only passed the ball once on first down. That particular time, Plunkett was sacked for an 11 yard loss. But first down situations, they haven't been establishing anything. Plunkett has completed only one of five passes for 10 yards since four of the battle. As time he goes deep, and he keeps, he's there. to the crowd. I think they 
that really shows the quickness of that running back, Kenny King, because he was going from the backfield, and that was a long pass. He was going against Robert Brazil, number 52, who has excellent speed. He turns around, and he has him beaten, makes the catch, and both feet inbound. For the Oakland Raiders, now, they, you talk about field position, this is the field position you love to have, right at the goal line. Gibson and Van Egg are the two running backs. This is Gibson trying the right side. He is stopped at the line of scrimmage, maybe just inside the two. It'll be second down and goal to go. Daryl Hunt and J.C. Wilson make the tackle. During the regular season, Kenny King's longest reception was 18 yards, and that one was 37 yards. Well, you have, uh, give the offensive line credit because Plunkett had an opportunity to stand back there and wait for that running back to come out of the backfield and run all the way downfield. In order to, to throw it that long at that situation, the offensive line has to do the job. Van Egan is down. And Mark is pushed back. He may get to the one, but boy, this is just a foot at a time. Rick Bingham, the leading tackler, was the man that was there for the Oilers, and he had a lot of help. Well, he's the man back there that's reading the play. No one generally can get to him to block him. He's filling the hole now. He's making sure that the back does not get into the end zone. But in a goal line situation like this, the linebackers, generally you can't get you can't get an offensive lineman out of the line of scrimmage because everybody is so tight in there. So he is uh, roaming free right behind the line of scrimmage. Let me tell you something, Charlie. That was an excellent throw because when you roll to one side at the goal line and throw back to the other side, if it is underthrown and somebody picks that ball off, you're looking at six points the other way. That time it was an excellent throw. Number 27, Greg Stemrick, was on that side. It was a great catch by number 46, Todd Christensen. He's rolling to one side and coming back, throwing across the field. It's an excellent throw. 27, Semrick was there. The catch was made by Christensen. Hit six points for Oakland. And that is Christensen's first reception of the year. Extra point is good. The Oakland Raiders are back in front. They lead by three. A 41 yard drive in five plays. It consumed two minutes and nine seconds. We'll be back with the kickoff. And this young man, Christensen, just gave him the football. His name is Clay. He's an outstanding football player and lost the leg in an industrial action. Boy, what a moment for him. Far kicking off. Feel it at the five-yard line. Roach is spinning his way to the 25. Still big up 20 yards on the return. back 20 yards. Derek Jensen makes the tackle. And the Houston offense will go to work trailing for the second time in the game. Now you take a look at Tom Flores, the head coach. Five plays, 41 yards, at two minutes, nine seconds on that scoring drive. But you mentioned pregame show that Oakland is a big play team. And the big play on that one, of course, was a touchdown, but it was the pass to Kenny King. Morris Bradshaw is the Oakland Raider who is injured and we have an injury timeout he's an outstanding special teams man for Oakland comes in as a third wide receiver Lock is stopped now with 526 Jim Plunkett you know they've talked about Plunkett you know what's wrong with Plunkett and he didn't do so well in the middle of the season he's been the starting quarterback in 11 games they have won nine a lot of a lot of teams would like to say we have a give us a quarterback like that for the report on Iron Matthews knee injury he will not return they hit low and he is wrapped up Lester Hayes got him second sack of the ball game for the Oakland Raiders and Hayes got both sacks so you've got a defensive cornerback blitzing well he has responsibility if a back came out his way he wouldn't be able to do that but the back went the other way so he had no responsibility on the coverage so he just takes off after Stapler gets him around the neck and brings him down 
A big play once again for Oakland. I'm sure that they haven't shown this. This is something new because Staber had no idea or no inkling whatsoever that this man, a cornerback, was going to be blitzing. Loss of 10 at second and 20. Five in the secondary. Staber drills it, passes complete to Casper. And Casper moves to the 26-yard line. They get 10 of it back. Otis McKinney and Ted Hendricks make the tackle. Dave Casper has been doing this for a lot of years. Here he is. Just, he's finding, look at that. He's looking for the open area. Looking for the open area. The back is coming the other way. Stabler is reading. The report on Morris Bradshaw is a bruised elbow. He can return. Third down and ten. Stabler under pressure. Throwing. It's there. It's incomplete. Casper stopped. The defender had slipped. He misjudged it. He definitely misjudged that because all he had to do was run under that ball. No one was anywhere near Casper. It would have been an easy reception for this man. Number 87. Casper's coming in. Take a look at the footing there. It doesn't look very good. Right there. Davis slips and falls. Wide open. He hesitated right there. If he'd have kept on moving, Charlie would have come up with the football. But the field is a factor in this ball game. I've seen some slipping out there already in this first half. That was a big slip by Davis. Marshley to kick. Moody is set for the return. He gets a good one off. Moody at the 30-yard line. Hit at the 35. He comes down at the 36. Booby Clark, number 42, does a great job on the special teams with the first man down there to hit him. And that punt covered 44 yards. Okay. This is Lester Hayes, all that stinking on his hand. Oh, that's a nightmare to quarterbacks trying to handle the football. Bucket to throw. And he bounces this one incomplete. Whittington, the intended receiver coming out of the backfield. Bingham had picked him up. So move it back to the open 36-yard line. Picked him up after he threw him down. But uh, that was good coverage by Bingham. And I think Plunkett was just throwing that ball in the ground to get rid of it. It'll be second down and 10. You can see that this field is many things, and you can see the top of the screen or the middle top of your screen is the sun area over there. So if you're throwing the ball in that area, it's a problem with the sun and locating the football. Defensively, Stinsrud is in, and Hollywood Henderson is in. Second down and ten. Four on the pattern, out of the backfield, passes to play. Good open field move by Whittington. First down. He picks up around 20 yards, make it 19 officially. He put an excellent move on the cornerback, number 33, Wilson, and then Raymond Chester was downfield, and he provided another good block. Here it is. It's a delayed pattern to the back coming out of the backfield. You're going to see a good move on the cornerback right here, right there on Wilson. He slips and falls, and there right there, number 88, is Raymond Chester made a good block, enabling him to pick up about another 10 yards. And then Vernon Perry took him out of bounds the Houston 44-yard line. 3.48, time remaining, first half. Open with the football and a three-point lead, 10-7. Pluck it to throw. He goes up top all alone if he can get to it. No! Bob Chandler came down with the ball out of bounds, and he was all alone. There was not an order within 15 yards. Oh! I was asking just a second ago, what about Bob Chandler? They hadn't thrown him the football. He is another big play man. Plunkett going back in the pocket, has good protection, gets the ball up. Makes an excellent catch on the football, but the ball was thrown too close to the sideline. But the man is that wide open. You don't throw it anywhere near the sideline. Bring it back, even if it's short, to the inside. He can come back and make the catch. He tries valiantly to keep both feet in. You can see that Jim Plunkett uh, does not like that. He'd like to have it back. You don't get that many opportunities in a ball game when you have a man wide open down the field like that. Plunkett has completed 4 of 10 for 68 yards and a touchdown. He'll go to the air here. Pass is complete, tight end Chester. He takes it at about the 42-yard line. Tatum hits him immediately. It'll be a gain of a couple. And it'll be third down and eight. Now Tatum is well aware of Raymond Chester. He played with him for a few years. And how he runs past batters, and he was all over it. 
Houston now with five men in the secondary. For the Raiders, third down and eight. Three minutes and nine seconds. Time remaining. We're in the first half of the AFC Wild Card game. It is open out in front, 10 to 7. Oh, they move. Open move. It's going to be five-yard penalty. Looked like the left side. As you know, from tackle to tackle, once you go offensively from the three or four-point stance, you cannot move to the ball snap. Ball start. Offense. Number 63. On Gene Upshaw. Gene's been around. Upshaw. Too long I can't believe that. 14 years. He has never missed a starting assignment ever since he put a Raider uniform on. What a, what a great individual he is. Great player he has been. You think he's padded up enough? Look at that. It'll be third down and 13. The penalty taking the ball back to the 47-yard line. Houston territory. Chandler comes wide to the near side. Branches wide to the far side. I believe. The illegal procedure that Carl against the Oakland Raiders. And that really hurts. Taking a look back here, Plunkett going back to pass. He has time. A good move by Ray Chester, and he is wide open on a corner move. The corner meaning you're running toward the corner of the end zone. Offense number 78. Backing out before the snap. Here it is, 88. Raymond Chester. 33 is uh, J.C. Wilson, the cornerback, and 28 is Jack Tatum. Either one close enough to the big tight end, but they've brought the ball back anyway. Number 78, Art Shell. Trying to punch a little bit. Charlie trying to get back there. Now it's third down and 18 at the open 48-yard line. by a man that was very questionable as whether he was even going to be able to play in this football game or not. Two things that I saw on that, that particular play. One is that uh, Chester has great speed and Plunkett really has still has that great arm because he really he threw this ball at least 65 yards in the air. But that great interception right there. 32, strong safety, Vernon Perry. And that is his fifth playoff interception. He had five also during the regular season. He's playing with a bruised thigh. We're not even sure if he would start, but start he did. And he has certainly played well. Did he start or Tatum? Tatum started, Tatum started and he came right in immediately. They didn't fool around. Now for the 20-yard line. Carpenter picks up four to the Houston 24. It'll be second down and six. Mike Davis with the tackle. Here's the snake, Kenny Stabler, and this is with draw play to 26. That's Carpenter. He's looking for a hole. As you can see that, he's looking Ross for a place Carpenter to go. Was the ball carrier. There isn't any place to go. Second and six, and Carpenter is the remaining back. Earl Campbell is not in the ballgame offensively. They were lots of time, and then he will be sacked third for the open Raiders. And Dave Browning got it. He pumped twice. He was looking for his tight end. to the right. But that just took too long to establish that pattern. And you take it, that was about five seconds, Charlie. And if you have uh, five seconds to throw, if you can't get it off in five seconds, somebody is well covered. You can see he's looking for Casper. Pump twice. Now he goes down to Dave Browning, number 73. Two-minute warning will now be given to both benches. We've got a timeout, and we'll be back. Oakland leads by three. Third down and 14. We mentioned it is called the two-minute warning, and it's not just a two-minute timeout. The reason being a two-minute warning is both teams are warned of rule changes in the last two minutes of each half. The one that you notice more than anything else is on a kickoff. The clock does not start until the ball has been touched in the field of play. The quick pitch is to Carpenter. 
He leans forward to maybe the 17-yard line. It'll be fourth down and 13, and the Raiders stop the clock as Dave Browning and Rod Martin make the tackle. You know, this is a tough play on the turf down there that's very slippery. Browning came up with the He's trying to pitch out, trying to get outside everybody. There was a blitz on the inside. Right there, you can see him slipping. That's all it takes. A little hesitation like that and gives the defensive men an opportunity to catch up and make the stop. Raiders stopping the clock now with 1.55 left to go in the half. The Parsley will be kicking to Keith Moody. And Oakland again could have good field position. And they're a big play team. They've come up with a couple of big plays so far. The one big one that I can recall is the pass to Kenny King setting up the touchdown for the Oakland Raiders. What they must not do right now, the Oakland Raiders must not commit any errors down here in the form of penalties. We have a report on Mike Davis. He has bruised ribs. He is being x-rayed. Boy, this is a tough, bruising football game. I was here. talking to the, uh, the coaching staff before the ball game, and I said, is this going to be like I think? It's going to be a very physical game. He said, you had better believe it. Pressure is on. Okay. Moody takes it at the 38-yard line. He's to the 40. 45. 50 fumbles, flags are down, and Euler came up with the football, but out of bounds. We do not know if he had possession inbound or not. There were two flags. It was Adger Armstrong who had it. That kick covered 45 yards. There were 16 yards on the return. We'll sort out the fumble. We'll sort out the penalty flag. I think you can take a look at Bum Phillips and see that it's not going in favor of Houston. He wants an explanation. He's saying he thought it should be Houston's football, if I'm reading lips correctly. The penalty flags going against Oakland, but they retain possession. Now with Armstrong on a fumble recovery, he has to have possession in the field of play. I, I don't think that he did, Charlie. I think that he was... Personal foul, clipping on the run back, number 57. First down. Clipping on... Randy McClanahan. That is the second foul that he has been called on. You can see the ball is, is jarred loose. Now you have to have possession of the football inbounds before going out. He gets a hold of the ball. Does he have it? No, I don't believe so. No, he did not have possession of the football. It's a good call. Possession defined as having possession of the football to do any act common to the game. Lucky to throw is completed 5 of 12 for 70 yards. Complete. At the 49-yard line, Chandler went up for it, and Reinfeld timed the hit perfectly. Chandler, it was a good play by Mike Reinfeld because Chandler had that football, and Reinfeld jarred it loose. As you're going to see right here, the ball is there. He's great hands by Bob Chandler. He's got he's concentrating on that ball, but there's nothing that he can do about it when you get a shot like that. So Oakland has the ball at their own 32 as you watch again the hit of Reinfeld. It'll be second down and 10. 135. Time remaining first half. Reinfeld from the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee on their campus. The first and only NFL player from that college. And he will always be the first and only player because they've dropped football. We've got a timeout. Now here's what happens. If Houston wins, then next weekend, on Saturday in NBC, Houston will be at San Diego, and Sunday, Buffalo will be at Cleveland. If Oakland wins, then on Saturday, Buffalo will be at San Diego, and Oakland will be at Cleveland on Sunday. As far as Buffalo, Cleveland, and San Diego are concerned, <laughs> they don't care who they play. This is what you were talking about in the opening. When you get to this stage, you do not care who you play or where you play. The important thing is that you All play. five teams have identical records, 11 and 5. Now, I, I believe the team that is going to go all the way and win it is a team that really believes that they're the best team. Now, that's just not talking about because now they've got to go out and prove that they are the best team. It continues if you win, and it's a very short season if you lose. It is Oakland 10 and Houston 7. Oakland scoring first on a 47-yard field goal by Chris Barnes. 
That was set up Mike Davis, a fumble recovery. Earl Campbell scored from a yard out for Houston. Pluck it to Todd Christensen, a one-yard pass, a 41-yard drive. That has been the score. Whitting to the ball carrier. Bingham makes the tackle. Oakland is being conservative right now. They had that draw play call, which is a conservative play, hoping that Houston would think they're going to pass and, and really rush the passer. And now Houston calls for a timeout. That's two in a row that Houston has called, putting him in a third down situation. I know what Houston would like them to do. They would like to have Oakland throw the ball and have it incomplete to stop the clock. Third down and ten. Branch diving for it. It is incomplete, stopping the clock with 1.13. That time, the blitz was on Bingham. The linebacker was blitzing, and Plunkett had to get rid of that ball a little sooner than he wanted to. And it, they got their wish. They threw the football. It was incomplete, and stops the clock with 1.13 remaining. And Houston's going to have another opportunity to score before the half is over. Ray Guy, though, will be kicking. And he has been sailing the ball today. Carl Roaches is set for the return. What a difference a week makes on synthetic turf in New York. He had a terrible day for Ray Guy. Also, it's a very cold day, which makes a difference, too. Temperature here, mid-50s. Wind is not a factor. Just a little bit of a breeze. Oh, it's another beauty. He looks like he tried to punish that football. You better pick it up wrong with it. One bounce at the 12 to the 20. 25-yard line. That kick covered 56 yards with a 13-yard return. Mario Solano with the tackle. And now Houston has the ball. Clock is stopped in the change of possession. They have one minute and one second left in the second quarter. You were mentioning something. I don't know whether a lot of people realize or not, but when it's on a cold day, the ball is harder, and it doesn't have the spring that it does on a warmer day like this. And that's it's a good reason why, one of the reasons why Guy is, is pumping that ball out there a lot further today than he did a week ago. Rob Carpenter is the remaining back. Mike Grinfro and Billy Johnson are in his wide receivers. The two tight ends, of course, are in. Stabler throws pass is complete. It'll be a first down. Rod Martin makes the tackle on Mike Renfro. It covered 12 yards. And the Oilers are very quickly moving upfield. 37 yard line, first down. 40 seconds in count. This one is dropped off to Carpenter, and he simply drops the ball. No, I don't think he wanted it. See, right, right here, it's too too soon to call a, uh, a timeout because they only have one timeout remaining in the first half. Here we're taking a look at the blocking of, of Casper. He's slowing a, his man down and going out. And he's looking around, just trying to find somebody to block because it was going to be a screen pass to the back. Second down and 10, 37 yard line. Don't forget, a live phone hookup with Dan Pastorini. He'll be talking to Brian a couple of times, so be sure to stay with him. Pass is complete out of the backfield is Carpenter. The Carpenter to the 50, to the open 49 yard line. There was a flag drop that stops the clock. Play covering 14 yards. They call timeout. Oh, they call timeout. timeout. I'm sorry. Because they had to 27 seconds remaining because by the time if they call another play to get up at the line of scrimmage, at least 10 to 12 seconds would have elapsed. And that's too much time to waste right now because they're on the 50 yard line. They can throw a pass and get it out of bounds, Charlie, to edge down there toward the area where Tony First can come in to uh, into the field goal range area that he is capable of kicking. Rod Martin and Ted Hendricks making the last tackle. His range that we have seen today is about 45 yards. That means you'd have to kick it from the 35. They have to get to the 28. You're looking at the clock, 27 seconds. And uh, teams will work on this to get on the field, get lined up for a field goal. You need at least 15 seconds. At least 15 seconds to get out there and get that done. So we bear that in mind. They have about, uh, you know, about 12 seconds that they can use before they have to kick the field goal. Now, 12 seconds that could be getting a, a sideline pattern getting out of bounds or, or anything but if the ball is in play and the clock is running and there's 15 seconds remaining they had better be on their way to line up for a field goal 
looking at Tony Frisch. Now, re also remember that number five, Chester Marco, is a kicker for the Houston Oilers. And number 51, Ted Thompson, is a box developer. Depending upon the distance. Sabres pass is complete. It'll be a first down at the 38-yard line. You get a line Look up. Billy Johnson line covering up 11 yards. Away. 14 seconds. Flag is down on the play. Raiders may have been offside, but there may have been a false start. Whatever it Take is, your it stops the clock. That's what Stabler wanted. I don't know whose fault it was, but it did stop the clock. Offsides against the Oakland Raiders. So from the line of scrimmage, the 38, that will take the ball to the 33. We've got 11 seconds now. You can you got to throw a sideline pass, step out of bounds, and go for the field goal. You cannot. Side defense in the middle of the line. First time. You cannot complete a pass inbounds and get a playoff, period, with 11 seconds to go. If he's going to throw the football, it has to be into the end zone, hoping for a touchdown or throwing the ball where the man can catch it and get out of bounds. And right now, field goal range is 50 yards away. They Flags are down. Open within the neutral zone. Pass far side and out of bounds. Has it. Mike Rimpro catches it at the 15-yard line. Where he goes out with six seconds left to go. And there were flags down. Monty Jackson had the coverage on Rimpro. I know that Oakland moved on the play. Yes, they were. They were in the neutral zone. Take a look at this throw. This is an outstanding catch by Renfro, and also the ability to get your feet inbounds. He does that, I believe, as well as any receiver in the National Football League. Offside defense, number 90, refuse. First Call on Willie Jones, refuse. The line of scrimmage, the 15. That is the first reception of the ball game for Renfro. And here is the field goal attempt from the 22. It'll cover 32 yards. Going for the tie at half hour. Six seconds. Left to go in the second quarter. Flags are down. I thought I saw Houston move. And the official signal the kick was no good. A full start. Number 70 offense. The two officials under the goal post said no he did not hit it we have two seconds on the clock that was a first down he will have another chance though Tony has missed from 45 yards away short and he missed this one but it is a race for the penalty, so he has another chance. This is well within his range. Two of them he's missed so far in his first half. It will be first down and 15 if they accept the penalty, or second down and 10. Ted Henry's coming over to talk to the official. For some of the discussion that is going on. And then it's picked up. From the 27. An attempt of 37 yards. And the top. For the football, I believe it was Lester. Was it Lester Hayes that came up with it, or Willie Jones? Lester Hayes came up with it. Willie Jones is the man who blocked it, and time runs out. And so did Temper. They're very short right now on that field. I'm looking for a real explosive second half. Tony Fritz coming in to kick the ball. He just punched it. It's a low kick. He didn't really get it up in the air. 
Or you'd say Houston is ahead because they're ahead in practically every category. First downs, total yardage, passing, time of possession. But right now, Oakland enjoys a three-point lead. And Tony Fritch will kick off for the Oilers. Christensen and Moody are deep, and Keith Moody is on the return to the 20-25. Hit at the 38, comes down at the 42, and it was Tim Smith who made the tackle. Big hole there on that occasion. An excellent field position for the Oakland Raiders coming into the second half. That Oakland offense with Jim Plunkett at quarterback. Kenny King and Mark Van Egan, the running backs. Cliff Branch and Bob Chandler, the wide receivers. Raymond Chester, the tight end. That offensive line, Art Shell, Gene Upshaw, Dave Dalby. Mickey Marvin and Henry Lawrence. 42 yard line, first down, Oakland, their own territory. Mark Van Egan gets the guard. He goes to the 46, gain of four, it'll be second down, six. Robert Brazil makes the tackle. Defensively for Houston, the open with Mike Stensrud, Ken Kennard, and Elvin Bethay as the starting front three. Ted Washington, Daryl Hunt, Greg Bingham, and Robert Brazil are the linebackers. J.C. Wilson, Vernon Perry, Mike Reinfeld, and Greg Stimmerich in the secondary. Second down and seven. Kenny King. Eight of three to the 49. It will be third down and three, a very conservative opening. Well, I think that they want to establish the running game to keep uh, their defense off the field because I know what's going to happen when, oh, when Houston gets that football. They're going to put Mr. Earl Campbell to work. But if they can move that ball and get some more points right now, particularly in the first drive. This is, a, this is at halftime. They come in, you come out of the second half. They're all pumped up. They're fired up. The adrenaline is going. And if we're open, if they can take some of the starts out of Houston right now, it'll be to their advantage. Yeah. Well, bobble on the exchange from the center. Kenny King gets the call. He does not pick up any yardage. It will be fourth down. And Oakland will be kicking. On that last play, Bingham, number 54, the linebacker, really put a shot on him, but he wasn't able to wrap him. Here it is, 54, the leading tackler for Houston. Avoids all the blocking, makes the hit, but does not make the stop. But fortunately, when you talk about gang tackling, there are three other men around there. Number 50, Daryl Hunt, is the man who really put the stopper on King. Ray Guy has been averaging 52.4 yards. He has been booming. He is giving a punting exhibition. And he does it again. And goes to the far side. Then it takes a kick back bounce. And will be down inside the tail. He kicked that ball end over end and it still trampled about 50 yards in the air. And for Houston, unfortunately, it hit that turf down there. And that's the difference between the regular turf and synthetic turf. Synthetic turf, generally when the ball hits, it's going to bounce forward. Here it dug into that turf down there. Came up a big break for the Oakland Raiders because they've got him backed up now about the nine-yard line. I expect to put Earl Campbell to work now. He is there. Earl Campbell, Tim Wilson, the running back, stayed with the quarterback. Now remember, it'll be most of the second quarter that Campbell was not in that offensive set, so he is well rested. He has five quick yards to the 14. It'll be second down five. John Matuzak and Ted Hendricks with the tackle. On first down, you take a look at the linebacking core. They're up there tight. You can see 55 is Matt Millen up there. They're looking for the run on first down. They know they've got to stop it. Even though they're in the linebacking position, they're playing run first. They're bunching up there, hoping to stop Earl Campbell on first down to put Stabler in a passing situation on second down. That was the 18th carry for Campbell. He has 67 yards. This is 19th carry. And he has one more yard, and that is it. He runs into a mountain at the 15. Bob Nelson was there. And they, they stuffed him on that play. You're taking a look at the left side of that offensive line. Conway Heyman, who is in there replacing Angelo Fields, number 77, the big man. We did not expect to see Angelo Fields back in the ball game this afternoon. Angelo Fields out with a sprained knee in the first half. He will not return. Wilson and Campbell come out. Carpenter and Johnson come into the offense. Third down and four. This is a passing offense. the pressure knocked away Barber 
Remember the intended receiver, Otis McKinney, the fifth man in the secondary, went up over the top and knocked it down. And that time, Barber should have really raced back toward the football because he gave McKinney an opportunity to knock it away. The ball was up a little high, and the reason for that is because there was a lot of pressure being put on Kenny Staber, and he's falling back. He had to get rid of the ball. As you can see, Willie Jones, number 90, coming in there, putting the hit on. But right there, up over top, getting a hand on the ball, knocking away from Mike Barber. So Cliff Parsley will be kicking Keith Moody at the open 40-yard line. Raiders will have good field position. at the 46 to the 50. A flag went down at the 48-yard line. The punt covered 39 yards, the return seven. But this will go against the Oakland Raiders. So their field position will be wiped out by the penalty flag. Number 35 is Dwayne Osteen is pleading his case out there. And Hollywood Henderson is out there also. It might have been on him. Thing you can't do you're going to get an excellent field position if you don't return it any yards you're going to be the one thing you do not want to do is have a penalty for clip if there's any doubt don't throw the don't throw the block now look where the look where the ball is now it's back there on what 33 yards foul clipping on the run back number 35 you're right on First Dwayne down. Osteen number 35 got a timeout and we have 11:29 left to go we're in the third quarter the wild card game we have 11:29 left to go we are in the third quarter of the wild card game and oakland leads 10 to 7 Plunkett has completed 5 of 14 for 70 yards one touchdown, down he's had an interception he goes to the air slides as he sets up drills this one almost intercepted greg bingham had a great defensive play he was going to cliff Brand. Had a hand on it, just couldn't put it in. Trickled off of it. I tell you, Plunkett did not see Bingham on that play. He saw Branch Second wide open, number 21. Cliff Branch is going down. He's going to turn back to the inside on a turn pattern or a curl pattern. Back to the inside, looking for the open area. And he thought he had it. He was getting ready to catch it. It was low. And Bingham came in and made an excellent play right there. Almost came up with the interception. You would think, you know, here's... The linebackers, their, their hands are all battered up because of the tackle. The second sack for the Houston Oilers, and a flag is down. Elvin Buffet shot in there, didn't he? Did he get a running start? I don't know. But they had two sacks during the regular season. It is against the Oakland Raiders. Well, they're holding. They didn't do a very good job of holding because they were on Plunkett. He didn't have a chance whatsoever to get rid of that football. It'll be refused. Holding. Offense. Number 78. Refused. Third down. Holding on Art Shell. Back at the 24. Here it is. Plunkett going back. He's looking. He, he knows that he has protection to the other side over there, so he's not looking over there. And it's just a great move on Elvin Buffet beating Shell. Third down and 19. Additional back in for Houston. Check the hard is in the ball game. Tickets is in the air. Incomplete. Chester, the intended receiver. That was Wilson that had the last shot. J.C. Wilson, the cornerback, had the last shot at that ball. Boy, the ball was in the air for a long time, too. Ooh, it was up way up in the air, too. He really fired this ball because you're going to take a look. That he steps and really unloads that ball. Bounces way up in the air. I don't know whether it was head, Bingham's head or who, but no one knew where the ball was. Ray Guy will now kick. Carl Roach is set for the return. Not that good a kick for Guy. But he gets the roll. 26-yard line. Flipping two tackles. Flag goes down. There may be a face mask on. Well, I know his head jerked back in a hurry. Derek Ramsey was there. The punt covered 50 yards, and the way Guy has been kicking, it's not that good a kick to return seven. Horse Bradshaw, number 81. Remember, he left the ball game in the first half because of a shoulder, a shoulder problem or an elbow problem, but that's uh, right here. The grab around the, the face pad. It is either five yards or 15. 
Normally at five, it's 15 if you grab it, jerk it, and turn the head. And it's a judgment call. Ray Guy now has punted seven times in the game, averaging 50.6. Here's the call on the play. On the run back, a face mask by the kicking team on the tackle, first down. So Houston goes to work on their own 37-yard line, but before they do, we'll take a timeout. Ten minutes and 57 seconds left to go. Quarter number three. Houston, their own 37-yard line, play action on first down. Has pressure, slips the pressure. In the coverage, it's caught, 24-yard line. Lester Hayes has the coverage on Mike Renfro. 39 yards, that is Renfro's second reception of the ball game. Remember the first one? Sideline pass into the first half. He was not looking for Renfro, he was looking the other way. Plenty of time, good pass protection by that line. He avoids a move right here. A lot of other quarterbacks were taken off and run because there was nobody in front of him. But he drilled that ball and Renfro came up with a big catch. Something that they have needed. Now they're in excellent field position and they put Earl Campbell to work. There it is, Renfro, 82, wide receiver. Good, good coverage. By Lester Hayes, he threw the ball away from Lester Hayes. Earl Campbell batters his way to the 18-yard line. He has six yards when anybody else would have had three. You're at battered is right because that is sheer strength of Earl Campbell banging up in the middle of that line. Matuzak and Martin Stockton. Conway Heyman blocking on Browning, number 83. He gets his body in front. Of Browning away from the ball carry. And that's a good block. He didn't have much leg drive though, and it's probably because of the back injury that he's had. Second and four. Campbell. Campbell first down. Earl going to the 13-yard line. He picks up five yards and the first down. And they're going to that left side. They've got Conway Heyman, number 70, over there that's playing in place of Fields, who is out. We'll not see any action because of an knee injury in the first half. Number 34, Earl Campbell, straight ahead. Straight ahead blocking. Just looking for a standoff block up there. And he had a good block by Bob Young, 63, the offensive guard. Earl Campbell doesn't need a whole lot of room. You give him a little bit, he's going to make some good yardage. Miller and Nelson on the deck. It's a first down at the 13-yard line of open. Campbell will get a yard to the 12. It'll be second down nine. Reggie Kinlaw and Dave Browning stop him after one. They're taking a look at Conway Heyman once again. They're looking. It's, it's a draw play. He's hoping to entice that defensive end Browning to go to the outside, but he made a good play. He was not going to go that way, and he tried to leg with him at the last uh, moment, but it wasn't to no avail. They made the tackle. Only picked up a couple of yards. Earl Campbell very slow getting up, but Earl is always very slow getting up. Yeah, Bump says he's slow going down, too. Intercepted in the end zone. And now to the one-yard line, the man in the secondary for the Oakland Raiders is Lester Hayes. Listen to the crowd. this ball and ricochets and ricochets down there generally there's a defensive man to make a play and it does Lester Hayes 37 the man that's been making the interceptions all year comes up with a big play stop a scoring drive by Houston the leading interceptor in the National Football League this year <laughs> is he ever happy Lester Hayes their own one-yard line. They go with two tight ends. Mark Van Egan. Five-yard line. It'll be second down and six. If you look at Lester Hayes, you were talking about during the commercial, he has more stick him on his hand <laughs> and his elbow pads. I don't think you can pry a football away from him. Well, he has a lot on. And Oakland is famous for that. I remember Fred Bolitnikoff used to hate it because they'd have all that glue on their hands and it makes it tough in gripping and throwing the football for the quarterback. Lester 
just missing tying the record during the regular season. Flags are down. Plunkett is down. Ken Kennard may have gotten an early start or he may have been drawn off. Let's see. He definitely got an early start. I don't know whether anybody drew him off sides or not. But he didn't go half speed when he did it. He was going full speed. 71 defense and close to That will take the ball out to the 10. And that is a big, big play. The second and one rather than second and six. You betcha. That makes a big difference. Now they've got two downs to pick up that first down. Second down. Just under seven and a half minutes left to go in quarter number three. Oakland with the football and they lead 10 to seven. First down, Oakland. Mark Van Egan gets it. It's almost like a wedge play for the Oakland Raiders. They're blocking straight ahead. Blocking straight ahead, giving the ball to the big fullback. Here from from behind. The quarterback in the back straight ahead. He's looking for a hole. He finds it. Now the head goes down. The legs keep driving. He's just looking to pick up a couple of yards in the first down, maintaining possession of this football for the Oakland Raiders. Andy Doors with a tackle. Open with the football. Their own 14-yard line. First down. This is the crowd. Kenny King. To the 19. He has five. It'll be second down and five. Elvin Bethay stopped him there. The quickness of Kenny King made that five yards because he was out there in a hurry. Also, Big Art Shell, the offensive left tackle, number 78, was out providing a block. We have somebody down. And it is Ken Kennard, the middle guard, number 71. This has been a tough, physical football game. Six minutes and 34 seconds left in the third. We've got an injury timeout. Oakland has the football, and they have the lead, and we'll be back in just a moment to wild card action. Angelo Fields, the rookie, at 6'6", around 350 pounds, starting left tackle. Injured in the first half with a sprained knee. Second and five, Oakland, their own 19-yard line. His determination alone, he got three yards to the 22, so it'll be third down and a pair. Robert Brazil was trying to bring him down. There's nothing mysterious about what Oakland is trying to do, Charlie. It's just straight ahead, almost missing the handoff here, Plunkett to Van Egan. But it's just straight ahead, power, that's all it is. Oakland's been doing this for years to their offensive left side behind Big Art Shell and Gene Upshaw. They're looking to maintain possession of this football. Van Egan has 31 yards rushing. Kenny King has 23 yards rushing. That's a total of 54 for Oakland. Where Campbell has 82 of Houston's 90 yards rushing. Oh, he quit. He Kenny quit. King. Quickness and speed. No substitute for it. First down. The talk before the ball game, of course, was the fact that Stabler, Casper, and Tatum played with the Oakland Raiders. Well, Kenny King started with the Houston Oilers. As a rookie last year, their number three draft choice, he was a fullback. That meant that he played behind Earl Campbell. He had a total of nine yards rushing. Oakland traded for him. They made him a halfback. Play action. Plunkett misses Chester. Chester had good coverage by Hunt on him, but I think he was initially looking to try to go deep to Cliff Branch, who was running a deep pattern. But he was well covered in the secondary. Plunkett has not had that successful an afternoon when you, when you look at the statistics, but he can go deep and he can hurt you in a hurry. Well, yes, he can. We We've saw seen that. that in the first half. He threw the ball about, I don't know, 65 or 70 yards in the air. About and three you, times. <laughs> when you have a burner like Branch, that puts a lot of pressure on that secondary. And also a burner like King swinging out of the, as a running back. Second and ten on the draw. 
This is Derek Jensen. Andrew, nice play by the big defensive lineman on that draw play. They've been talking about Mike Stendrew. Houston really feels that he has really come into his own this year, doing an outstanding job. This is a draw play, hoping to catch them coming, but number 67 has that quickness. Gets a hold of Jensen, throws him down. Now it's third and ten situation, Charlie. The punk is going to have to once again go back and put the ball up in the air. The Oilers going with four down linemen. Hartwig is in, five men in the secondary. For Oakland, three wide receivers. They take Raymond Chester out. They bring Bradshaw in. It's Morris Bradshaw. Third down and ten. And the pass is underthrown to Branch. Branch is open, Charlie. And the pressure was the reason that he wasn't able to get that football to him. Houston put the pressure up front where he couldn't see that well. He knew he had to get rid of the football. As you can see, that Jim Plunkett is not too happy with that last play. Here it is. This is what a quarterback is looking at. Coming back in the pocket. Now straight up in his face, you're going to see some of the, the defensive linemen. There it is. Up in the air is number 52, Robert Brazil. And that impairs the quarterback's vision. And he threw a, a poor pass to Branch. He had he been able to see Branch all the way and had an alley to throw in, he'd have been able to get the ball to him. And time and time again, Ray God has punted the ball. And he alone, oh. and he does it again, he alone has kept the Oilers with their back to their own goal line. Roach is on the return. He's in big trouble at the 15. A punt of 56 yards and a flag comes down. Derek Ramsey with the tackle. Ray God has had an afternoon. Not only does he kick the ball far, but today, more importantly, according to the coaches, he got that great height. So it gives the, the, the team, the kicking team, an opportunity to get down under that ball. Clipping against Houston. I saw Booby Clark, it looked like he clipped, and it was really unnecessary if it's the one that, at least from the angle that I'm looking at. When you start going sideways when you're returning that ball, that's giving that, that team that's kicking it an opportunity to get down under it. Personal foul, clipping on the run back, number 50. First well, stop. That's a cute, a it was on Daryl Hunt. <laughs> Poor Booby Clark. Uh, that it was Daryl Hunt. Regardless, they're backed up against the goal line. Ray Guy's average, 51.3 in eight pots. Houston with the ball, their own nine-yard line. Yeah. And the Bradshaw, you saw that is Terry's younger brother. Saber has completed 60% of his passes, 9 of 15. And time in the coverage. An excellent reception by Mike Barber. And Barber goes to the 43-yard line. He had to sort out the defenders, circle behind them, and the play covered 34 yards. That's the confidence that Stabler has in the passing game because the linebacker was all over Barber, but the linebacker had his back. Look at the time he has to throw. The, the linebacker has his back to the receiver, and it's underthrown. And he comes back and makes the uh, reception. Bob Nelson was the linebacker, and he was right there with Barber all the way. And we have somebody down on the field once again. Burgess Owens, the free safety of the Oakland Raiders. Look at this. Linebackers there. As a matter of fact, Nelson overran the ball. Barber coming up because he was looking back at Stabler. He could see it all the way. The linebacker had his back to the line of scrimmage. In that case, the, the receiver definitely has the advantage. Mike Barber was a bit upset. When about the fourth game in the season that Houston traded for Dave Casper, he went right to Bum Phillips. He said, are you trying to tell me something? And Mike Barber ended up having the best year of his career. 317 and counting, time remaining third quarter. Here's Earl Campbell. They Three yards to the 45, second and seven. Playing the run all the way. They had about eight men up on that line of scrimmage that time looking to stop Earl Campbell and force Stabler in a situation where it's second long, they'll have to throw the football. Reggie, even, even at that, he picks up, what, three yards on the play. Reggie Kinlaw and Mike Davis make the tackle. Carl Roaches is now in as a wide receiver. Wilson has come out. Campbell is the remaining back. So Renfro, Roaches, Casper, and Barber are the receivers. Second and seven. Lester, he's in trouble. He was That is the fourth shot for the Oakland Raiders, and it was Mike Davis who got it. And you take a look, they've had four sacks, three of the sacks have been by defensive backs, two by Lester Hayes, 
One now by Davis, the other one by Elvin Buffet. No, 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 no. Let me just make it. The other one by Dave Brown. That's right. Yeah. Just want to make that correction. That is as many times as this man has been sacked in one ball game this year. Oh, that's a big play. Takes it back to the 33 Elvin, loss of 12. Elvin Buffet sacked Oh, man. Hey, that's a trick. I wanted to get that one. <laughs> I knew you'd like that. <laughs> 30-19. Pulled down by Mike Barber. 44-yard line. Gain of 11. So it will be fourth down. And still around eight to go as Otis McKinney makes the tackle. This is the crowd reacting to the defense of the Oakland Raiders. talked about the, the big play of the Oakland Raiders and we aren't always talking about the offense That's because right. the defense has come up with some big plays in this ball game today. Marshley's kick to Keith Moody. Oh, nailed that. Goes into the end zone through the end zone a punt of 56 yards. So Marshley he has been watching Ray Guy at work. An excellent punt by Cliff Marshley. So Oakland will have the ball on their own 20-yard line first down with a minute 23 left to go in the third quarter, and we have had no scoring in the second half. Houston has had an opportunity. Stabler intercepted by Lester Hayes in the end zone. It looked like that Houston definitely would get an opportunity to get some points. It would, it would be a chip shot for Tony Frisch if they had an opportunity to kick the field goal if they didn't get the touchdown. You look at the statistics and you look at what, what is happening, you figure that and Houston is winning, and yet Oakland is down in front. I mean, it, it, the ball, it has a strange feel to this ball game. That's why they call it the wild card, because that's what it has been. Gain of a yard by Arthur Whitting. I get the feeling that something is going to happen. Yeah. Something's going to explode out there, and gonna, we're going to have a big play by one of the two teams. Yes, at any moment. Yes. And it may be looking too far ahead. We still have a minute to go here in all of the fourth quarter. But overtime is not beyond a possibility. Second and nine. Second back through. Whittington to the 23. It'll be third down and seven. Alvin Bethay makes the tackle. They're now Puckett will throw deep. That's right. He's trying to establish a running game, get something going. Wasn't able to do that. Now he's going to be in a situation where he's going to have to throw the ball or draw or screen, which is the passing situation. Houston knows that. They're making changes, bringing in some additional people, including Jack Tatum, the leading uh, interceptor for the Houston Oilers. He's in the ball game. Right. He had seven during the regular season. That is the high in his career. Kenny King is back into that offensive backfield. Third down and seven. He's an excellent receiver. Chandler shows motion. Both backs in the block. And one swings out in the left flat. Going deep to Branch. He has a 45-yard line of Houston. Cliff Branch. is Oakland 10 and Houston 7 and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station you see what he's wearing Super Bowl ready that's what they're looking for both teams out there want to be wearing one of those things after about what five weeks four or five weeks January 25th Report on Burgess Owens, cut out, could be back. 44-yard line of Houston, Oakland is the ball first down. We open the fourth grade. Play out. Good fight by Plunkett. Going deep. He's over. Yep. Has the touchdown. Raiders. Arthur Whittington. 44 yards. to Whittington, credit that offensive line of protection, Van Egan stays back an excellent throw by Plunkett right on the money, he beat Darrell Hunt number 50, the linebacker into the end zone for a touchdown an 80 yard drive in four plays and it 
took a minute and a half. I credit the wide receiver Grant did an excellent job of clearing out that area, providing man-to-man -man coverage on the running back by their linebacker, punt number 50. The extra point gives the Oakland Raiders a 10-point lead. 14.53 left. We'll be back with a kickoff. Charlie, the reason that it's man-to-man -man out there because Cliff Branch cleared out that area. If you look down there, you have a linebacker on a back, and you do not see, until just Vernon Perry comes into the picture right there, a defensive back in that area. That's the great respect they have for Branch because when he takes off deep, they're going with it. Bar, good shot. Taken at the eight-yard line by Ronnie Coleman. And Coleman returns to the 30-yard line, and there's a flag down on the return. Derek Jensen and Jeff Barnes make the tackle, but time and time again, on punting plays and on kickoff plays, we have seen flags down in this ballgame. And generally, it's against the receiving team. Here it is, holding. The one thing, you don't, as I say, you do not want to do, you don't take a chance, particularly when you're going to get the ball in good field position, don't jeopardize your team and take a, take a chance of... of getting you back and that's what they're going to do right now they're on the 25 yard line looks like where the officials are starting so here is back to the 16 yard line now they got 84 yards to go holding on the run back number 45 first down holding on tim wilson so the oilers will come out troy they have billy johnson and mike rim throw in his wide receivers casper barber and as a tight end Rob Carpenter is the remaining back. Pressure. And it is Mike Davis. The strong safety. Fifth sack for the Raiders. And four of the five have now come for men in the secondary. Mike Davis has had two. Lester Hayes has had two quarterback sacks. And I'm sure Houston did not expect that. If they did, they didn't have anybody back there to pick up Davis because you're going to see him coming in right now. Normally, it's a linebacker that comes on a blitz. And the halfback looks for him. If he comes, he stays in on the blocking back. They don't necessarily look for a cornerback to come. No, you don't because you're, you're responsible a lot of times if you're a running back in a passing situation, he's a linebacker. You locate that linebacker first. If he comes, you block him. If he doesn't, then you go out in the pass battle. Carpenter has a yard, and that is all. Ted Hendricks has him, and Rod Martin joins him. Now just think back the last two plays. On the kickoff, a penalty. Takes him back to the 16-yard line. Going back to pass, they had the blitz on. The safety man comes and nails the quarterback. Now they're down back to what? The, about the seven and a half, eight-yard line. And it's a third down situation, 18 yards to go. Not a very good situation to be in, but do not count the stake out. He's been there before. Carl Roaches comes in, Johnson comes out as a wide receiver. The blitz again, a double blitz. They almost get him for a safety. He gets the pass off, but barely. And the flag goes down. And that is right on the 25-yard line. That would mean defensive holding and an automatic first down. Stabler avoids it here. They had the blitz on. Browning, 73, gets a hand on it, but he overruns it. He throws the ball, but he gets nailed as he throws it. Hendricks hits him, and all he was trying to do is get rid of the football to avoid that loss back there. And Ted Hendricks is 6'7", 225 pounds. Holding. Defense, number 23, first down. Holding on Otis McKinney. Now, any defensive foul with five exceptions carry the first down. That's offside, the encroachment, delay of game, illegal substitution, excessive timeouts. All of the defensive fouls carry a first down. That is the reason it is a first down at the 13-yard line. They've got a first down now. They started on the 16. They're still they're back on about the 14-yard line. And Earl Campbell is in, and he carries. And he goes out to the 17. He has four, so it'll be second down and six. Burgess Owens coming back in the ball game, Charlie. And that is good news. He was out with a cut eye. Lots of time remaining. 13 minutes and 10 seconds left to go on the fourth. Earl Campbell, 86 yards rushing, 23 carries. Boy, they have shut him down at 23 carries. Not a lot of yardage. Usually he has around 155, 160. Well, Oakland has done an outstanding job against the running game all year long. They've had problems against the pass. Morton with Denver put uh, 
I was 461 yards he threw for Denver against uh, the Oakland Raiders. 20 yard line. Matuzak and Kenlaw make the tackle. It'll be third down, still around three. Now you're taking a look at what Earl Campbell is looking at, looking for a hole, looking for an opening. He sees it right there, he feels, but it's closed in a hurry. The big John Matuzak, 72, is in there to make her help on the stop. Now Ronnie Coleman comes in, Wilson comes out. The Raiders will have four down linemen as Willie Jones and Cedric Hardman come in, five in the secondary. Oakland is looking for the pass. Campbell, the remaining back. They throw far side receiver slipped and fell. Mike Renfro slipped when he made his cut. He had no chance. We've seen it several times today on this field where the receivers or the players have slipped. They had good pressure on Stabler once again. He had to get rid of that ball really before he wanted to. Keeping Earl Campbell in to help block, but you can see the pressure coming. He knows he has to get rid of the ball because he's nailed right there by number 53, Rod Martin. If he'd waited any longer, he'd have been sacked. Cliff Farsley to kick. Keith Moody is set for the return. Aaron Matthews, normally the punt returner for the Raiders, out with a knee injury. Will not return. He'll just leave it alone. Just inside the 35-yard line. Hollywood Henderson down very quickly. The kick covered 45 yards. We have 11 minutes and 54 seconds left to go. If the Oilers are to get back in the ball game, they have to do it now, and their defense has to do it. The defense got to do the job of stopping Oakland right now. You can only say it for so long. Well, there's so much time remaining. They're down 10 points. Kenny King gets the call. He'll lose a yard. It'll be second down and 11. Robert Brazil and Greg Bingham make the tackle. The defense of Houston knows they've got to stop them. On the other hand, Oakland knows they're looking at that clock also. 3 or 11.35 and counting down. If they can get a... They don't have to score now. They get a few first downs, occupy some of that time, punt it away, and put them in bad you know, field position where they've got to go a long way. What they do not want to do, Oakland does not want to do, they don't want to give Houston anything. If Houston gets anything, they're going to have to earn it. Second and 11. Pass. Play action. Tip. Incomplete. Chester, the intended receiver, Vernon Perry. Oh, and he was open, too. Vernon Perry read that play very well and got a hand up, and it's a good thing he did because Raymond Chester was open. And you can see the, the blocking back there, Upshaw coming up there. Good protection. But right there, you can see the Perry got a hand on it and knocked it up in the air. It's fortunate, really, for Oakland. The ball didn't bounce high enough because you saw back there once again was a Houston defensive man. He could have come up with an interception. Third down and 11. Tatum now in the secondary for the Oilers. Five men in the secondary. Plunkett has completed 7 of 21. Whittington, three blocks. Up at the 40 yard line, maybe the 41. It'll be fourth down as Vernon Perry got him. And Ray Guy will be kicking again. Houston defense did the job, and they did the job on first down. They stopped Oakland on first down. I think they had a second eight situation after the first down, forcing Plunk to go to a play pass, and that didn't work. So now it's a third down situation. Oakland did not want to take a chance, I'm sure, of putting that ball up in the air and throwing an interception. As I said before, Oakland's feeling right now, if, if Houston is going to get anything, let them earn it. Don't give it to them. Roaches is set for the return, and Ray Guy has been the most valuable player for the Raiders in this game. He sails a beauty that hangs forever. Ten yard line, 15, flag is down, 20. It's a crowd microphone down there. And Ray Guy makes the tackle. That punt covered 50 yards with a 20-yard return. Carl Roaches has been doing an outstanding job today of returns. He escaped some lightning down there on that play to pick up 20 yards. You take a look at Ray Guy, who was a safety in college. He knows what it's all about to tackle people. So Houston has the football on their own 31. Just over 10 minutes left. Houston now from their own 31-yard line. He's going to pass. 
Campbell can throw it. But where? Out of bounds. <laughs> he has completed one of two during the regular season, and that was for a touchdown, but this one was to Renfro. I will say one thing, that when Earl winds up the throw, he does take a long time to throw. Osteen had the cover. Here it is. He showed pass real soon. <laughs> yeah. And just wound. They didn't say it don't make any difference whether it looks pretty or not, Earl. Just get it out there. But he's going to have to understand that when you do throw it out of bounds, whether you catch it or not, it's no good. That pass that we talked about that he completed during the regular season was to Billy White. Hughes Johnson covered 57 yards for a score. Second and 10. Raiders now will go with five down linemen, four down linemen, five in the secondary. Roaches and Renfro are the receivers. Campbell, the remaining back. There's the way you throw it. And there's the way you defend it. Lester yes, Hayes. Excellent coverage. Perfect. Perfect coverage. What a day he's having. He's had two quarterback sacks. And for a quarterback, that's virtually unheard of. You don't have that in the whole season. But here you got Renfro going up top. Man-to-man -to -man coverage. 37 Lester Hayes with Renfro. Makes an excellent play right there. He turned his head around. Didn't lose sight of the back to where his re the receiver is. Located the football and knocked it away. And don't forget also he had the interception in the end He has the stick of that glue all over his head here. As well as the rest of his body. Rob Carpenter in the backfield. It is third down and ten. Flags are down. Pass is incomplete at the 45-yard line. Renfro is claiming pass interference. Lester Hayes has the coverage, but a flag was dropped back at the 30 on the far side of the field. Well, I know that Oakland jumped. The defensive lineman jumped. I don't know where they got back or not. May not have. Might have been uh, Willie Jones. Here it is. pass interference remember on a pass interference call that the defender has the as an equal opportunity to the football as does the receiver but you can't go through the man he almost went through offside defense the left side of the defensive line third down and that was willie jones who was the left side of the defensive line we picked him up third down and five 36 yard line Pressure again. Sack number six, and Willie Jones got it. Six sacks for the Oakland Raiders. That is the most that Saber has been sacked in any game this year. They are putting the heat on. Jones got to him, but Cedric Hartman was also in there. So was Ted Hendrick. Matuzak taking an inside rush. The outside with Hartman and Jones. Jones coming up with the sack. But there were three Oakland Raiders right around Kenny Staber that time. That's pressure. There's no way out for Staber. He couldn't go forward, sideways, or anything. Parsley to kick now to Keith Moody. Not that good a kick. But he does take a good roll. For the Houston Oilers, goes to the 25-yard line. So Oakland will take over on their own 25-yard line. That point covering 47 yards. The Raiders have a first down. And we have 9.17 left to go. And that is John Matuzak that's taking us to commercial. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome from their own 25. Play action on first down. Get it back over. Danny and Van Eager. 45-yard line. 46-yard line. Upgraded by Mike Weinfeld. Good call by Oakland. I thought that was an excellent call because they hadn't been getting anything on first down. They decided to go with a play action pass. Houston, on the other hand, knows that they have to stop Van Egan is hobbling off the field, but here's the play action pass. Van Egan is waiting there, He's hanging around, then he goes over the line of scrimmage, just dumps it off because the linebackers are flying back. The tackle is going to come up and be made by number 37, Mike Reinfeld. He caught him right in the thigh. That looks like the problem for Van Egan right now. But that's a good call by him. Van Egan is on the sideline. They're working on him. A gain of 21 on the play. Look at that speed. Kenny King around the corner for down. 40. Touchdown and saved by number 37, Mike Reinfeldt. Out of bounds at the 27 yard line. A gain of 27 yards. Winnington going into the ballgame, as you can see right now, but watch the speed. He goes looking to the inside. Now he puts it on right now in the outrun. 
Wilson, number 33, goes to the sideline. Right now, it's 37. Mike Reinfeldt is there. If he hadn't been there, they'd put six four points on the board. Taking a look at ground level, what it looks like down there where all the action is taking place. But the speed of, of King is getting a dimension to the Oakland Raiders that they haven't had for a long time. Well, if they've ever had. Report on Matt Egan and Charlie Horns. He can come back. Only seven-yard line, first down. No gain by Arthur Whittington as he is dropped by Robert Brazil, Daryl Hunt, and Elvin Bethesda. It'll be second down and ten. All right, Oakland is in good position right now. Eight minutes, ten seconds in the ball game. Counting down. They're in, in field goal range, I would think, for Barr. Second down situation. They're eating up that clock. I look forward to keep the ball on the ground. Second and 10, 27 yard line of the order. Like I said, the thing to do is show it up front. He's open in the end zone. Incomplete, a flag is down. Flag drops the 11 yard line. Chandler, the intended receiver, and he was open. And a marker was dropped the 11, and it'll be pass interference, a gift. The Houston Oilers. Yes, number 33 is J.C. Wilson out there, and I think what it was, it was kind of a stop and go, or making him look like it was going to be a sideline move, and one up top was wide open. Pass interference, defense, number 33, first down. Here it is, Bob Chandler. Coming down, he's going to the outside, and he just lets him run. He was expecting him. If the coverage was man-to-man, -man, he was expecting him to run a sideline pattern or a shorter pattern, and he ran right by him. The thing to do is to try to grab him to save a touchdown. And that's what he did, and he made contact, and the flag drop. 11-yard line, first down. Chandler in motion. Quitting. Whittington is buried at the 10. Okay, go for a gain of one. Will be second down and nine. Check of the clock shows 7:37 and counting. Time remaining. This drive could well wrap it up for the Oakland Raiders. Listen, this is the big drive right now. You know because it's right now they're up by 10 points. Three points, very very big, because that would force Houston to score two touchdowns to go ahead. But if they get a touchdown. Could be 16 or 17 point lead. It'd be almost insurmountable with seven minutes remaining in this football game. For Houston, they got a big in right now. Bucket to throw. In zone, incomplete. He had pressure. Everybody was covered. He was just throwing it away. Chandler was there. Perry had the cover. He had to throw it a little higher then because when you start throwing that ball in the middle, down there by the end zone, you're always going to have some defensive players around. They're either a linebacker or a defensive back. And if you're not really throwing it to your man for a score, you better just throw it way over everybody's head. Chris Barr, who is hit early in the ball game from 47 yards away. Van Egan back in the ball game. He's all right. That's good news for Oakland. Third down. Houston Oilers. Bingham got him this time. Did he ever get him? He flew through there, and Plunkett didn't even have an opportunity to get set and get turned around before Bingham nailed him. A loss of 10 on the play. Take a look at it right here, right up through the middle, and he's going down because he knew he did not have a chance. Whenever you get pressure, if you're quarterback pressure, straight at you. It is really difficult to avoid. If you get it from the outside, you can always step up. But that time, Bingham was there. That's a big sack. Takes him 10 yards back in this attempt for a field goal. And a depth of 37 yards. It is good from 37 yards away. And the Raiders now lead the Oilers by 13. 20 to 7 with 6.25 left to go. Six minutes and 
25 seconds left to go in the twilight of the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. Could well be the twilight of the season for the Houston Oilers. Bear in mind, the Houston has outscored their opponents 108 to 66 points in the fourth period. Coleman on the kickoff return. Reverses and reverses into trouble. And Edwards. Rich Martini and Derek Ramsey team up as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson, 6-13, left to go in the AFC wild card game. Bum Phillips, the head coach of the Oilers, trailing by 13. Houston at their own 12-yard line, first down. They're going to be putting the heat on Stabler now. They've been doing it all day, and they're not going to stop now. Pass is incomplete. Casper, but it was behind him. Be sure to stay following football with us for a special two-hour chip that will be seen in its entirety. We're going to slide the network tonight. That means that when the football game is over, then you will be able to see chips from the beginning to the end. On the West Coast and most Mountain Time Zone stations, chips will be seen at its regular time. Second down and 10. Tough situation for Houston because just take a, you'll take a look at those defensive linemen. Look at them. They're down. They're ready to fly. They hit one side in mind. That's good to stay there. And they do. And they do. That is the seventh sack for the Oakland Raiders. Listen to the crowd reaction to Ted Hendricks' sack. What a great year he's had, Charlie. Twelfth year. I see he's done so many things. He has made so many things happen. He creates fumbles. He blocks kicks. He blitzes. Does an outstanding job with that. Pass coverage. <laughs> As they say, he can do it all. Seven sacks, 65 yards in losses. They're going to go after him again, I bet you. Far side, incomplete. See what that pressure does? See what that pressure does? A lot of times they don't even get to you. But you get the pressure and you got to get rid of it before you want to. And I see a yellow flag there. Yes. Otis McKinney had the coverage, and you're right. The receivers simply do not have time to get into their pattern. Ball start, offense, left tackle. That is on Conway Heyman. It'll be refused. It'll be fourth down and 19. Now let's go back to that pressure that Lynn Dawson was talking about. He's keeping the backs in to help block as he's in the end zone, but still look at the, the players coming. Their arms are up. He knows he can't afford the two-point loss down there. Did I miscount? I must have. They have it third down. They just changed it on the scoreboard. Charlie, I'd say this is it for Houston. Pressure is there Lester again. Hayes. Intercepted Lester Hayes. He'll score. Lester Hayes. Touchdown. That's it. 20 yards on the interception return.
point. It's good. 27 to 7. Oakland leading with 529 left. Defensively, Oakland has done a tremendous job on this Houston team. This Houston team that has the, the running of Earl Campbell who gained almost 2,000 yards with 1,934 yards during the season. The defensive backs have done a tremendous job for Oakland. They have four, quarter, or four sacks by the defensive backs. Two by Davis, the safety, and two by that man, Lester Hayes. Not only that, but Lester Hayes came up with that big, big interception. Lester Hayes with two interceptions and the touchdown. And the reason the miscount on the down was on the false start penalty, you cannot refuse it. It's automatic because it's called and they had the down go over. That was the reason for it. Vernon Perry also coming up with a big interception in the end zone. Lester Hayes had some kind of game. Oh, he really had. Roddy Coleman and Carl Roach use their set for the kickoff return. Chris Fire boots it away. Ronnie Coleman. 20, 25, 30, 32 yard line. Houston from their own 32 first down. Morris Bradshaw making the tackle for the Raiders. Oilers trailing by 20. Three touchdowns in 519. Maybe an impossibility. It is not an impossibility, but you know, in order to get the third one, you have to get the first one first. And they got to do it in a hurry. That's where they're at a disadvantage because of speed. Got a great tight end of the running game, but they don't have a Kenny Burrow that can get out there with a great speed to break it open. Pass is incomplete and the flag goes down. The only one there. They have to call it on him. Pass interference, first down. Houston at their own 43-yard line. It's a break for Houston. Not only get the first down, but they stopped the clock. It only took five seconds for that play. Five minutes and 14 seconds left. Penalty covering 11 yards. Able to throw, drops it off underneath the coverage to Rob Carpenter, who slipped at the 47 yard line. He has four, it'll be second down six. Ted Hendricks was there just to tap him down. This advantage for Houston. They're accustomed to playing on the carpet. That would not happen. The ground uh, slide out from under your feet. Time running out. The Houston Oilers. Local knowledge, I guess in, in golf they say local knowledge yep. of the course. Yes. Well, it helps here in Oakland also. Rich Castor is in as a receiver along with Carl Rocher. That is Dave Casper. Otis McKinney was there for the Raiders. 45 yard line of Oakland. That was a good throw by Stabler. You could see that Casper was trying to get out of bounds. Wasn't able to. Stabler took a, a hit on that last play and went to the turf, and he was he's slow getting up. First down at the Raiders 45, 407 and counting. Time remaining. Pass is complete to Renfro. Fumbles it. It is picked up by the Oakland Raiders. It is, guess who, Lester Hayes. Hayes reverses. He wants to use up the clock. No, they're going to bring it back. They blew the whistle. They said the play was dead at the 24-yard line. The Oilers will retain possession of the football. Burgess Owens is the man who made the hit. This is a good throw by Stabler because he had to drill it in there between about two or three defensive players and over the head of Hendricks. To Renfro making making the stop and he, hey that's very close Charlie he was up in the air I think that's the first call the officials have missed in this ball game he was take a look at that he was up in the air he, he lost possession in the air you're right he's got possession of it right now so he did a catch he is hit right there the headgear goes in and knocks that ball loose 
And it's up in the air. He didn't hit the ground before uh, the ball was lost. And a flag is down on this play. That last play covered 21 yards. So we'll sort out the flags. Clock is stopped now with 3.27 left to go. Offsides against the Raiders. Ben Shapiro and Bill Breslin have been our spotters. Ted Reinholz. Assisting Joe Costanza, NBC statistician. Thank you, gentlemen, for an outstanding job. 3.27 left. Here's the call. Offside, like we said. Okay, 19-yard line. It will be first down and five. Saber needs a touchdown right now. Pass is low, but caught by Mike Barber. Down the sideline, fighting his way. Barber fights his way Ooh. to the one-yard line. Does that tell, tell you something about that man's character and how much he wants to play? He's not giving up by any means. A great effort not only to get out of bounds, but he got the ball all the way down inside the five-yard line. It's a low throw. He makes an excellent catch. Look at this catch. Now he's got to get turned around. He slips a little bit also, maintains his balance, gets that hand down to maintain balance, and then goes as far as he possibly can, running right over Lester Hayes, knocking him out of the way. Burgess Owens bumped him out of bounds, so Mike Barber goes to the one-yard line, where it's first and goal to go. 3.18 left. He is, uh, Barber is really a, a great competitor. You're right. They need to score. They need to get it in there right now. Campbell. No, it was not Campbell, it was Tim Wilson. But it was also really Jones did a great job. I talked about down here near the goal line, the thing you have to do defensively is get penetration to disrupt things in the backfield. That time it was accomplished by Willie Jones. Oakland Raider players shake it up. Otis McKinney is the injured player. See you taking a look right now. You see number 90? He is about two yards deep and makes the hit. The turf back there, and look at the, the grass flying around. The turf is real soft down there. The footing is terrible. Therefore, you shouldn't go sideways. You should go straight ahead. Number 90 is Willie Jones. This is Otis McKinney, who is being assisted off the field. That was the first carry for Tim Wilson. The ball is at the four-yard line. It's second down goal to go. Just over three minutes left to go in the ball game. It is Oakland 27 and Houston 7. What has to happen? They've got to get a touchdown. They've got to get the ball back. And getting the ball back, they will undoubtedly try an onside kick. They need three touchdowns. Caster in motion. Well, Campbell. They stand him up at about the two-yard line. It'll be third down and goal to go. Lester Hayes was there, along with Rod Martin. Giving the ball to Earl Campbell is a good thing. Down here, you're taking a look at 87, Dave Casper blocking on Martin, and it's an excellent job. He was taking him any way that he possibly could. Earl Campbell cut to the outside, and that's the way that the Martin went, and he made, helped make the tackle. Matt Millen finally got there to help stop him. Third down, goal to go. Campbell slips and he makes the cut at the four. It will be fourth down and goal to go. Burgess Owens was there to cover when Campbell slipped. And I'm sure the Snake now will put the ball in the air. Two minute warning. Two minutes to go, they're down by 24. And we've got a timeout for two minute warning to both pitchers. 27 to 7. We'll be back in a moment. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dotson, with two minutes to go in the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. The Raiders lead by 20 points. It is fourth down and goal to go for the Houston Oilers at the Oakland Raider four-yard line. They still have Earl Campbell in the game. You know, Earl is at a disadvantage, I believe, with this soft turf because he is so strong in his legs. He has such great drive that he just digs up the turf. Play out. Putting it up for grab. Incomplete. The Oakland Raiders hold. Osteen knocked it away. And Mike Davis was also there. 
He was looking for Barber, the tight end. He was well covered, but Kenny just put that ball up the air and hoped on this play. Taking the ball to Earl Campbell. Here it is, pressure is coming by Martin. He just throws the ball up in the air. There are two defenders over there. He was looking at Barber number 86 was in the area, but he was just hoping one or two things that Barber come up with a great catch or perhaps there would be interference. Let's talk about Earl Campbell. He's so strong in his leg. When he gets soft turf like this, and he starts digging in, he's going to dig up the turf. That's where he has an advantage, I think, on synthetic turf. Oakland now from their own four-yard line. One minute and 54 seconds away from winning the wild card game. Mark Van Egan, you'll pick up a yard. Houston will take a timeout to stop the clock. And this gives us time to remind you that the executive producer of NBC Sports is Don O'Meyer. And our coordinating producer for football is Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game has been produced by George Finkel and directed by Ted Nathanson. Technical director is Wayne McDonald. Associate director, Richard Klein. And associate producer, Michael Hatton. And they've done an excellent job here with oh, the telecast today. They certainly have. So right now, it will be on Saturday on NBC, Buffalo at San Diego. On Sunday, it will be Oakland at Cleveland. And Bob Phillips will be watching at home on television. Nice man. Yeah, he's a great, great man. An outstanding coach. And Tom Flores on the right, along with Steve Wartmeyer with the Oakland Raiders. Flores quietly has done a tremendous yes, job, he I think. He really was just, not many people remember, he was your backup quarterback when you won the Super Bowl. He wears a, uh, a Super Bowl ring and uh, he mentioned that Kansas City beat Oakland here for the championship the year that Kansas City won it and Flores was on that team. So he knows that a wild card team or a team that didn't win the division can go all the way. It's the first down for the Oakland Raiders. I asked him before the game, I said, well, are you going to give a pep talk to your, to your players? see that uh, Mike Barber there expresses what uh, they feel, but Flory says, yes, I'm going in and played with them until I have a big mortgage <laughs> and I need to pay for it. 113 and counting, time remaining. Mike Van Egan as the Raiders will be content just to run out the clock. I was missing a moment ago, but we can be more specific as far as times are concerned. On Saturday on NBC, 3.30 Eastern Time, starting, of course, with NFL 80 and host Brian Gumbel will be the Buffalo Bills against the San Diego Chargers. And then at noon Eastern Time, next Sunday, the Oakland Raiders will go to Cyperville, the Cleveland Browns. Those are two great games next weekend. Dave Castro. There's a good uh, formation because you see the man way to the right back there. He is there for one purpose. If there is a fumble, he is there to either make the fumble recovery or make the tackle. It's 15 all seconds and the crowd will take us to the countdown. 